Hello everyone and welcome to Answer the Call. Uh, it doesn't say it in the topic, but we have two very special guests here uh, with us and we are going to discuss ship speeds in Star Citizen. And the reason why, and we're here with Moist Noodle and Space Cutlet, so hello guys. Um, but the reason we're here to discuss this, it, it, the, the title's a little bit weird, but basically I was in Cutlet's stream maybe three weeks ago, and Cutlet was, like, pretty annoyed by the fact that the Carrick goes 1,200 and something meters per second, and anything that would bite it and take it down doesn't. So there's, like, this imbalance in the, in the, the whole uh, force of things, I guess, and these two guys are some of the best combat pilots in the game. They understand this more than anybody, uh, I come from this end of being an economy player, and I was t I was talking, we had a, a bit of a pre-show today, so if you end up watching the Twitch VOD, you'll hear a, a little bit more of this conversation that we had before Cutlet got on, and I feel as a non-combat player that it is very difficult to disengage from combat. And I think CIG's kind of loose solution now might be this larger ships go faster thing. Um, but what about when you're a prospector? What about when you're XYZ? You could throw anything in there. Um, so I wanted to kind of insert that in. Um, but yeah, I think we'll start with Cutlet to just start out the conversation with his feelings about the Carrick and maybe some other ships. And then, I, and then we can just casually go wherever this conversation takes us. So for example, solutions... What, what the problems are, what some possible solutions are, and we'll just free flow it, and then we'll bring in a few callers uh, towards the end of the show. So, Cutlet, yeah, you got the floor, man. Yep, thank you. First of all, I want to uh, stress, uh, you said, like, good combat pilots. I want to make <laughs> sure uh, I'm uh, making a point I'm not a good combat pilot, right? So uh, I'm just an yeah. average combat pilot. So because I know there is a lot of shit going, will go like, oh, Khaled is the dark kill law anyone. is better like, than everybody. Yeah, that, well, or well, like, yeah. oh, Guess you cannot even <laughs> kill me in my service. So that that's not the case, right? I'm Mo Moose, Moose Noodle average, is happening to fill man, in for for dark law. Whoa, 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 whoa hang on. I'm pilot, right? no, 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 no. Uh, just to explain, I'm not as good as somebody as the dark law. I'm not as good as somebody as Goliath or like yeah. Asar, right? I all I do is I pick on prospectors. I use head tracking to move the camera around a lot. I do a lot <laughs> of rolling and make it look fancy, right? And then I fly through the wreckage. That's pretty much it. Yeah, so but no. What I was saying was dark horrifying. was actually supposed to be on the show, and uh, he had something come up. So I, I, uh, I should, and I told Noodle came in. I was like. We should have all three of these guys on, but Dark Dark Law uh, unfortunately couldn't make it. So he's on vacation at the moment, I think, because yeah. PlayStation Five. <laughs> yeah, so he was like, "Oh yeah," I, he just said, "I had something in real life come up." And I was like, "That's fine, man. We'll get you on." Um, but yeah, so we'll get him on for another topic related to something that uh, he'll he'll really add to the conversation for. But yeah, um, Cutlet, it you what what I think when I say you guys are some of the best pilots, not only are like, may, may you be, like, a skilled guy. Maybe you're not as skilled as the Dark Law or Goliath or, or whoever. Um, but I think, based on the conversation that we had last time, I think we do, us us three, you two, do a really good example of explaining. Um, and, and, and your understanding of the game is really strong. So when we talk about things like this, it's, uh, I'll, I'll always want to have you on when it comes to combat, because I think the understanding of the game is just as important as your skills moving joysticks or mouse or a keyboard so yeah but again also, I, I, I think it's really important as well to be open-minded and, and to understand that different people like to play the games in different ways right and just because yeah. i'm into dog fighting i completely understand and yeah I, I joke about killing miners right yeah and the reason i do that is because it attracts more pvp mm -hmm. um which it could, can be seen as being toxic but unfortunately it's the nature of what how the game works right now sure um there is no dedicated pvp zone so we have to attract pvp somehow yeah. um but i am open-minded enough to understand that miners need better defense mm -hmm. right um so yeah that's that's essentially my attitude is be open-minded to how other people want to play the game yeah you know absolutely yeah. but go ahead Carlos. so it 
Yeah, yeah, it's like not about being a super good pilot. It's about more of an understanding overall the game mechanics, right? Yeah. Properly. So uh, to start this off, like, what is the top speed, right? What is top speed? Can anyone explain what is top speed? Uh, why? What do you mean? CG why is there one? I mean, uh, like, what is top speed? Why is there one? Why CEG puts in this or that value uh, to a certain ship, right? Well, it's generally limitation of the game engine, right? Right. There has right. to be a yes. There has yes. to be a top speed there. So we have limitation of a game engine one, right? Mm -hmm. Because like, it, it it's gonna be like. We cannot imagine right now even how Star Citizen will play uh, without the top speed limitation, right? Second, it's a gameplay limitation because if you don't have uh, gameplay mechanics, right? So if you don't have top speed, then everything else will be different. Like, we'll have to come up with the how we manage and like converge and target. Like, it, it's going to be a totally different game. So we have top speed as a fact, right? It, it's a game mechanics limitation it's a game engine limitation then the question is how to balance it and why the values in the game are the way they are right yeah why a certain ship had that amount of a uh, top speed the other ship had that amount of top speed so back in the day back in very long ago there were there was some kind of logic uh to top speeds uh, though uh, that logic is gone for quite a long time, right? Uh, it was like the ability of ship, its retro thrusters, something it had to be able to stop at an X multiplier to how it accelerates. and But that's gone. That's like no longer in place. And even if it is, it makes no sense anymore, right? So uh, my personal thought on this, and then we can probably kick off discussion from uh, from this point, is if top speed is basically uh, because of those two limitations is a uh, slice of an infinite um, acceleration, not like the infinite acceleration value, but accelerating infinitely, right? Because up to the speed of light, right? it should account actually the acceleration values uh, of the ships. So if a um, ship number one can accelerate at um, X amount of Gs, and then ship number two can accelerate at the double amount of Gs than the ship number two, obviously ship number, uh, the ship having the faster acceleration has to overtake the slower ship because otherwise it's kind of weird. Yeah. Like why a ship that accelerates slower and barely holds its ass can outrun in the end uh, the faster interdictor or whatever racing ship or doesn't matter, just yeah. a faster accelerating ship, right? Uh, because of the arbitrary uh, speed limit. Right. So, so what you're saying, let, let, let me try and uh, figure out what I think you said, is using the Carrick as an example, this is the ship number one. This is the ship that has the slower... Okay. Uh, this, this would be the ship that should have the slower acceleration because it's big and it's bulky, right? And then yep. the Gladius that might be chasing it, or it would probably be something bigger like a Vanguard, right? So let's use a Vanguard that has double the acceleration speed but they all yep. meet the same at, at they all end up meeting at close to the same uh top speed with the yeah. top and speed it, the end, it ends yeah. up meaning that because the Carrick has the higher top speed it ends up meaning that the that smaller ship that's supposed to be able to take it out never has the opportunity to yeah basically or or not the advantage that it probably should cuz it's supposed to be the more maneuverable exactly. it, it almost in the current state of the game, it almost feels like th the way that they have it is like the intention is for Carrick to fight Carrick, not ships with missiles and smaller ships equipped missiles to fight Carrick, which is like their whole purpose of what they were sold for, right? Is things like the Gladiator, Retaliator, Eclipse, 
are all supposed to be able to take out ships like the Carrick, like the 890, like anything larger, because they have torpedoes, which are capital ship busters, right, essentially. Yeah. Torps are another, like, story overall, right? Sure. It's, it's like... It's like the way they are right now, they're definitely nerfed. And because CG said we're going to have a rework for that and it's going to be totally different. Uh, Mom is coming in sooner or later and yeah. the way the Torps work. So that's like a totally different story. It's yeah. overall, uh, there is like, um, there is a caterpillar, there is like something else, a big ship, yeah. right? And you can kind of catch up with them with the smaller ships. But then there is a Carrick, and uh, it just all it has to do is press uh, W. And now the and Star Runner, shift. right? And now the Star Runner, yeah, yeah. Now the Star Runner probably both explorers. And, uh, pro- yeah, both explorer. Uh, no, Star Runner isn't actually an exploration ship. Well, right? I guess no. Yeah, true. Not an exploration it's, ship, but it's meant. To- yeah, it's- yeah, that's true. Yeah, sorry. Just yeah. yeah. I, I just want to clarify as well, what we're not talking about here is we're not saying we think a Gladius or an Arrow on its own should be able to take out a ship like a Carrick. Oh, right? definitely. Yeah. What we're People saying should get us right. is that they should be offered the opportunity to engage the Carrick, which right now they don't. Can you imagine watching a sci-fi movie like Star Wars or whatever, right? And you have a ship that has hostiles on the horizon coming towards them. And their attitude is, oh, there's hostiles just throttle up and just fly away. That's Quick, not overly Press exciting, W. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You That's know, the main thing. What's We're the not point of even having turrets on a ship? And something to bear in mind as well, this is part of a much, a much bigger balance issue overall, right? Yeah. Um, it's not just about the speed. Um, it's it's about, you know, time to kill. It's about turret yeah. gameplay. It's about, you know, taking down subsystems on ship. Um, but Again, we need to at least be able to engage the ships to begin with. And again, I, I get it. People want to be able to escape. I agree. You should be able to escape. This is something I talk about with prospectors and mining yeah. ships all the time. But that should be a skill check. The skill check needs to be more than press W. Yeah. You know, in my opinion. Absolutely. And, and I think that's the, the main point that we should like just super caveat here is nobody's saying yes. A lot of people always think that combat pilots want it easier on themselves. I don't think you guys want it easier on yourselves at all. I think you want to have as many sk- skill versus skill fights as possible mm-hmm. and to have as much totally. fun as possible. Right. And as a as a minor, I don't want the press W option to just leave. I want to be able to outsmart you and laugh on my way out when you didn't get me right it's the same scenario exactly and um yeah i think it's very important what what uh noodle said is it's a much wider balancing issue and at the same time i think we're gonna get comments and and people saying balance in an alpha haha like i don't think that's what we're saying either i think that's why we're discussing right we're discussing discussing. yeah and i think we're discussing because while it is balancing issues that can improve the problem the problem at the at its heart is not a balancing issue. I don't think in the traditional sense. It's um, it's a it's a kind of a game design problem in the current game. And then once these ships are able to engage or disengage each other, then you can balance how quickly they die, how much armor they have, how yeah. fast they like those kind of things, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that is the point of the conversation. So when like as we move forward in this conversation, and anybody who's interested in calling, that's really the theme of the show is is that specifically, yeah. is how do we get yeah, to I'll, that point? Yeah, I already see a lot of comments in in, in chat like just know how to do it. Uh, I think some people don't realize how much time I spend pirating and yeah. trying to get the ships. Right. You know, I've uh, been. I've seen people already making the comments about, oh, just EMP it. Oh, just use a Cutlass Blue or yeah. a Mantis to hold it in place. It's all well and good. But when you're Cutlass Blue, uh, when you're Warlock, when you're Sentinel, when all these ships are slower than the Carrack, good luck. When you're yeah. 10 kilometers away from it and it's pulling away from you, you can't do those things. No. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. You know? No, no, no. Okay. I- I'll-, I'll get straight to the point. If you're a smart and plan ahead, you can catch a Carrick with its pens down, then use a small fleet to take it down. I don't think you really understand. Uh, That's not the point of much... this discussion. Yeah. The, yeah. Point, of this the discussion point of this discussion is when, at the point of when 
the interaction happens. So get get that get get that through everybody's head that's listening on the show, right? Yeah. Uh, if I'm a if I'm a miner, I have all my uh, ways of avoiding combat. This is we're talking about once the scenario, uh, the engagement has happened. Okay, that is what we're talking about here. We're not talking about yeah. avoiding engagements or creating the engagement. It's once the engagement happens, how easily it is to separate with certain ships versus others and why and how this could be better. Yeah, people don't realize it, it will take Carrick, what, 10 seconds, maybe a bit more to get up to the speed where that's it. It's a GG. You're not closing in. You are already falling behind. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you cancel from that equation a broken to hell distortion scatter guns and overall distortion guns that have like 15,000 DPS, which it makes no sense. That should be just removed from the game, those values, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good luck. Uh, good luck trying to, like people are saying, oh, just get it before it gets to the top speed. No, Again, just good luck. Good luck. This comes down to what I was, I'm sorry that we keep coming back to this, but it comes down to the overall balance issue. And, yeah. and, and an example of that is, oh, you know, if you if you catch them with their pants, that's all well and good. But if they're inside an armistice zone where nobody can fire, right? All they do, and say they're on a moon, is they point the carrick up. There's eight of us all sat inside the armistice zone, ready to jump. And remembering that if we were to sneak on their ship, people would then accuse us of abusing the armistice zone and trying to hijack their ships because people get super antsy about that. Yeah. And then when they finally want to leave, all they do is point up straight up remember a couple of years ago when they reduced the height that you could quantum away from mm -hmm. they only have to be flying up for 10 20 seconds and then they can jump away oh, no 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 what 20 it's like three kilometers man it's yeah less. oh not even 20 seconds then you know but, it, it takes no time at all you don't have the opportunity to engage them that's the problem yeah what's the escape this mechanic if we are undergunned under armand and now the speed is also nerfed. And why, the first question, why are you going to the most profitable location under gunned and under armored? Here's Whose what, here's, fault is that? let me jump in real quick. For, for you two guys as the guests, I would say avoid reading Twitch chat or at least avoid responding to Twitch chat. Okay, sorry. Okay, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's was, okay, because was... here's why, here's why is, is um, you guys know more than anybody that the pirate versus non-pirate uh thing gets very heated and yeah, it's yeah. it's it's heating up in the twitch chat and the oh, yeah. so i'm not saying ignore it take what they're saying into consideration as you're continuing your conversation right because a lot of people are, are discussing like how to avoid these things we've gone through that in, in our last podcast if you guys want to watch the last podcast we talked a lot about piracy and how to avoid piracy but today mm -hmm. what we're uh, i'm seeing people in twitch chat type stop crying Nobody is here to cry about anything. The We're three of us are here. Yeah, the three of us are here to try and make this game better for everyone. And yeah. that is it. And you guys need to understand that that we are if we're crying about anything, we're crying about the fact that the game could be better and that we would like it to be better for everybody. And that's it. And I know that these two guys have the same sentiment as me. And that's it. So just please, guys in chat, be respectful to other people's opinions, and let's let's have a discussion about the game. And if you guys want to call in and have a real, uh, like just normal discussion about how to make the game better, feel free to call into the show, hop on Discord, and we'll bring you in. Okay, but like typing in Twitch chat, stop crying, things like that. And, and uh, if you guys type that in the YouTube comments, which I'm sure everyone's going to type it now, is um, not, it's not going to make the game we all want to be great better. Yep. So, yeah. So uh, just to uh, give a quick example how that works um, with like something like a Carrick, right? Yeah. Um, uh, you need a, uh, first you need a Cutty Blue, right? So I, I just want to get, uh, people up to speed, right? So they understand uh, the yeah. comparison of what you efforts, need to right? prevent a yeah. Carrick from going everywhere. Yeah. Right? So then, uh, and we will exclude 
overpowered distortion guns right mm-hmm. from the equation because it's it's gonna they're gonna go down like i think maybe next patch I, i'm pretty sure cg is aware of what's going on I with them yeah. they're gonna nerf down that so we, we're gonna say they don't exist right mm-hmm. so um <clears throat> first you need obviously let's assume uh we found the target right we see a trader in a carrick in an armistice zone right he's filling up we scan the laranite whatever right we want to um, stop him and uh, ransom him. Or in 312, supposedly what we have, what we see on the roadmap, we would be able to capture the ship, right, yeah. and uh, get the cargo, right. Hopefully, hopefully. So we need a Cardi Black, uh, Cardi Blue, on top of him, uh, with uh, without his shields and. Uh, without his shields and weapons online so he doesn't show up he should be around 10 kilometers out because so he doesn't show up on a radar with this obviously no crime stat because anyone will see his marker and kill him without shields right so we gotta have this uh waiting and then the whole other team somewhere a bit further away right so when the the uh the way the qed works right it, it is a two kilometer bubble around your ship Mm -hmm. Uh, but it is limited by a green zone, which is created by an outpost. So an outpost create a green zone uh, that is um, five kilometers from the center of the outpost, while your your bubble is two kilometers. So you can get on the distance of five kilometers to an outpost, pop up a bubble, and only in thick atmospheres uh, like uh, Ariel, for example, you have a chance of not letting someone warp out because they can warp out exactly at three kilometers. Three plus two equals five. So it's like zero like margin for error. Yeah. But if you position that bubble perfectly fine, you may catch him. Any other moon that has a smaller atmosphere, Carex, whatever other ship, they, they just are uncatchable. If they are smart enough, if they understand how the mechanics work, they just warp, uh, they just strafe up a bit above the surface. The moment the quantum drive kicks in, they just warp out and there is no way you can stop them. I would like to point that out to how broken that is. Zero chance to to uh, to catch them because you cannot just quantum dampen them. So let's take, it's aerial, it's high profitable zone. We can do this. So there goes the, um, there goes the Cutty Blue uh he sees the carrick going out he sees the pip appear so he's out of armistice zone you rush into that five kilometers you have to break exactly at five kilometers to catch him with a bubble but no go closer to the outpost because otherwise your qed will turn off you do 180 hmm. you start following him right and and then again the qed is a mouse interaction you cannot even press a button you have to release the controls go to the f Try to find that button, press it. It's awful, but okay, we've done it, right? You follow the Carrick, and then it starts from this moment, the chase starts, right? You have to uh, bring his shields down while that ship is moving with all the dissing. The further he gets away, the more of the dissing. So that's fine. That's a glitch. Like, that's that's just how the yeah, set and even work. the armistice zone thing's fine because we know that they're going to remove those from outposts yeah, at some yeah, point too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he goes, you keep, uh, you keep in front of him because of the dissing, because on the server you're actually more behind than you actually see it on your client. Something, so you keep in front of him. Yeah, go ahead. Something to bear in mind, and it's only going to be a short comment, um, even when we have better netcode, there will always be a level of desync at higher speeds. Yeah. Right? We're that's flying something to bear in mind. Yeah. And, that, and that's something we have to take in, into account when we're talking about the whole speed situation. Yes. Right? And this is why SCM speed is actually quite important, because even when we have the better netcode, I think when, once we, obviously until it's in, we, we're not going to know where that threshold is when ships start desyncing, but it will always be there. Yeah, it was always there. Yeah. continue, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the Carrick starts to speed up. He Just exiting a bit of Atmo, he's already above SCM. The desync starts. We try to keep it with a bubble, of a small bubble of two kilometers uh, of a Cardi Blue. We call in, obviously, at this point, you call in the team all assault. So people start to rally up on the tail of the Carrick, trying to bring his shields down. So we exclude distortion damage from that equation, missiles are pretty much useless against a Carrick 
just like not torpedoes missiles, right? Torpedoes won't hit right now. So uh, there has to be around probably three to four ships, which is fine. Yeah. I totally feel in future there should be even more to bring those shields down. I, I don't I don't kind of feel bad about it. I'm just saying the amount of people it takes, right? Yeah. So uh, there has to be like three to four vanguards, sentinels, I will say why in future, or Avengers maybe, but Avengers, yeah, or maybe Avengers Warlocks, right? Because we're talking EMP right yeah. now. So they have to go in onto the Carrack and uh, they start dealing damage to shields, right? Then at this point, we are already at the speeds that are around... Um, Easily seven, at top. Seven, 700, 800 meters yeah. per second. So the, start, the ship starts to desync. They barely deal damage even to such a big target as a Carrack because it jumps back and forth like a kilometer. And they're in so quantum... Point, they're, they got to be out of range to be able to... Out of atmosphere to be able to quantum travel at this point as well. Oh, they, they are already, yeah. yeah. So at this point, we call in already a Mantis... Amentis is another QED ship, as some of may not know or know that, which has a big bubble because the big bubble that is twenty kilometer bubble, you can pop only, I think, fifty kilometers from the green zone, right? So we're already far away from the uh, from the outpost. We call in Amentis because at some point, with the desync, with the ship jumping back and forth two kilometers, the Cuddy Blue will just lose it, right? Mm -hmm. It will just dissing out of its QED bubble and will warp away. So we call in a Mantis with a big bubble, right? Uh, okay, we're dealing damage to shields. We're dealing damage to shields. Finally, the shields are down. We pop in an EMP. Uh, probably it will not turn the Carrick off, the first one. So another Sentinel comes in, pops in another EMP, and then you have to have one more or two more sentinels to chain EMP this the Carrick so it doesn't go online. This happened to us. Cool, yeah, yeah because the cooldown on sentinels are pretty big. It's like one minute something, right? So you chain EMP. Uh, let's imagine the ship stop, but it wouldn't. I, I won't even go into that details. It will drift forever because we don't have tractor beams and they remove the space drag. But let's see. It's let's say it stopped. You. Then come come in with another ship, for example, a cuddy, just any cuddy that has boarding team inside, because you cannot leave ships just easier than that, right? You'll get wrecked. So you come in with another ship with a boarding party, you breach the doors, you enter the ship, and then it is a success. And it's all good and dandy on sound, dealing like it's what? Uh, at least three EMP ships, let's say it. Cuddy, cuddy Blue, um, Mantis, and then uh, three boarding team, like one pilot, two guys who board. That's like eight people just to fight Shiv W. Now, let me ask you. Fine. Yeah, oh, that's exactly what I was going to say is, Fine. do you have an issue? You do not have an issue with the amount of people and the amount of coordination it took to take down that ship, do you? Uh, sometimes I do. It it, in what way? Because the reason some like the reason I think this is bad and why we're having this conversation is I timed him because I knew exactly where he was going with this. He talked for about seven minutes about the amount of effort you have to put in to take a ship down like the Carrick. From my perspective, I think it should take that amount of skill, game knowledge, people, Definitely. coordination, Definitely. and effort. The problem with it is, is the nerd in the Carrick, I'm that nerd, all I have to do is press W, right? Yeah. So it's no, not. The problem is, it's not a. The problem equal. is different. Give me a second. One yeah. second. One second. The problem is different. It's all good and dandy, but the main thing it will not work because probably yeah. the moment he's out of thickest atmo, he will be already w one kilometer per second, and that point you just lose him. Yeah, that you're, was and, my and main you're at point. six or seven hundred. So it's that just your god. Theory, that theory that I was talking about, it just sounds cool. But the moment that is done, he will be just already going I think, away. I think part That's of the it. problem, um, and it, we need to think about the long term here as well, right? Yeah. Is that 
right now it's very difficult to make money from um pirating mm -hmm. it's very difficult to convince somebody to hand over some cash when you actually manage to get them stopped so they can leave and sell their goods sure right now if you've turned up <clears throat> if you've turned up with eight guys right uh bearing in mind that's eight people eight to ten people just take down a single carrot on servers right now which have a, a population of 50 right um and that person right um majority of the time from my experience and cutlet will probably back me up here most people refuse to negotiate with terrorists right yeah, so they will yeah. normally just self-destruct their ship they don't care about losing the the goods right but on the rare occasion that they are willing to pay something how much how much would you say they normally pay cutlet uh if he has a lot of larinite people may pay up from 50 to 100k but that's like happens 100k that's surprising. 100k that that uh operation probably took what half hour uh, i know? think like actually with finding Four a person hour? if if you can if you take like the scouting and actually looking for someone is going to be like two hours probably to find the so that much money position. split across that many people yeah when they could have just been doing ec analytics you know yeah. I mean, and, and, and again, I know we're talking about speed specifically here, but I'm yeah. trying to open people's mind to look. We're not just talking about we we don't think a single cutlass blue should be able to take down a carrot. We're not saying that we think an arrow should be able to take down a carrot. We're trying to point out that um, we are trying to engage these ships as groups, right? And it's yeah. it's not even financially worth it right now, but it's incredibly frustrating when that ship can just zoom away and the only skill check, well, there's not even a skill check involved, right? It's just hold yeah. W and then... If w. someone, if someone like, look at any of my streams, right, they will know how I feel bad about how bigger ships are in terms of combat. Yeah. And... I'm not flying big ships, right? That is totally an argument towards traders, towards people who hold cargo. How I say there needs to be a shield mitigation that will that will do the comparison of a maximum shield size and the damage the projectile deals. I want them to live more. Uh, how much I talk about the armor, I want them to be armored, like how they should have implemented the tier zero armor instead of what they did, right? I'm all up for that things to be in. I feel the protection is bad, right? There should be like turrets around outposts, you know, all that stuff. There should be like security warping and prohibiting us from doing that properly, like with good aim. I'm, I'm not the one who just want to kill stuff and yeah, you don't understand it. I just want to kill stuff all you or all, all you just stupid, you know, just go explode. No, no. And this, the talk is about actually having gameplay, not exploding Carrick. Oh, I know how to explode Carrick before he leaves Atmode, trust me. That's not a big deal. You just jump on it and destroy it. The point is when you want to have gameplay, the game, sorry for saying that word, prohibits you from doing that. And it does, it does everything to make you just want to destroy that ship because you're so pissed of how it's impossible to actually have any kind of gameplay. And that it goes to another argument, to an argument of self-destruct. And I was really triggered by CAG recently saying they are not thinking removing a self-destruct sequence by sequence by an EMP is a good option, right? Uh, I, I don't want to dive too much into that, right? Um, it's just, again, the moment you attack, you press backspace. If you escape, you press backspace again. If you don't, you get destroyed anyway with all the cargo. It's like all of that. It it makes the big picture just wrong of how it works together, right? Yeah. I mean, what now? I think we've discussed like what the problems are and how difficult it can be to slow down, take out, pirate, whatever smaller uh, larger ships in in a lot of cases specifically the carrick i think the star runner is going to play into that now as well um just faster ships and they decided to go with bigger ships equals faster smaller ships equals slower quantum drives 
same same thing. It, it, this this is all, uh, you know, even quantum drives can kind of come into this conversation if you want just a little bit. But now I want to shift the discussion just a tiny bit and say, well, what do you think then would be some of the solutions? Because like I argued at the beginning that, yeah, we need uh, as a as a non-combat player in the rock, paper, scissors that should be that combat engagement. So once the engagement starts, we have engaged in a rock, paper, scissors game between each other. Uh, I think a lot of people agree that that's probably how the game should play out. I don't know if CIG is really developing it that way. In But in imagine in the imaginary rock, paper, scissors game, where do ships like the Carrick, the Argo Mole, the Prospector, anybody who is looking to avoid combat situations, can I, typically. Can I yeah. bring up um, my point of view regarding speed? Now we've, we've heard... You know what? Yeah, Cutlet, we've heard Cutlet. I'm not... I'm, I promise I'm not going to talk as much as Cutlet, right? No one um, can. I'm going to keep this pretty simple. <laughs> but I'm, I'm generally a dogfighter, right? Yes. Um, and... And I apologize for not giving into... you the floor to let you. Sorry about Absolutely that. Absolutely fine. Bad host. Um, something that I run into a lot is, and, and well, one thing that I, I point out to people is you can normally identify who a good pilot is very quickly when you first engage them mm -hmm. because it's about their ability to get up in your face and pretty much stick to you like glue. So as you're yep. moving, they're sticking with you, right? Yes. Um, you can normally spot a bad pilot very quickly when the first thing they do is get up to top speed and just do a reverse ski maneuver at a thousand meters per second, mm -hmm. right? And just shoot backwards and fire missiles at you. Um, now, I know that some people don't think that we should be limiting top speed. Unfortunately, you have to because of limitations of the engine. Um, but some people don't think that we should be, that we should really have the SEM speed at all. Um, unfortunately, in the terms of dogfighting, you have to. And I, I said this earlier, desync. They're working on the netcode, but there will always be a level of desync there, whether you like it or not, right? This is a game about skill and precision. And when you're trying to hit small points on a ship, bearing in mind, most of the times when the average player is engaging either uh, an NPC or they're engaging another player, they most of the time, those average players, and I don't mean that as a derogatory way, I'm just trying to point out, they don't sub-target, right? Bearing yeah, in mind, when you sub-target, you're actually, you're trying to shoot a smaller part of the ship, not the overall hull of the ship, right? So you have to be even more precise. When, let me it's ask you... It's very hard to be that... When you don't mm -hmm. sub-target, does it just aim for the middle? Center. Yeah. Yep. Center, center okay. mass. Yeah. yeah. So, for example, say you're sub-targeting the engines on a, uh, a Vanguard, right? Which is very useful to do. Mm -hmm. Those engines are smaller than the overall chassis of the ship. Sure. Right? Um, now, when you need that level of precision, um, it's very difficult to have that level of precision when you're at a thousand meters per second yeah. and the pip is bouncing backwards and forwards. Yeah, half so, screen, again, yeah. when, when we have better netcode, I don't think it will be desynced to that degree, but there will always be a level of desync. So to the people who think that they, you know, we shouldn't be limiting combat speeds, I'm sorry, you have to. For the sake of gameplay, I know it's not realistic, but for the sake of good gameplay, you have to. You know, um, so that that's my my take on speeds. You know, I, I would like to see speeds generally for combat be brought down. Um, and as as for your question um, as to how we combat um, both the, the scenarios with the Carrick and with um, dogfighting in, in fighters, um, the one thing that I really look forward to actually is physical, physicalized components. Yeah. Um, again, you need that level of precision to be able to hit those physicalized components when you sub-target them again, which makes it super important to keep the combat speeds down. Mm -hmm. um, but the one thing that I really hope for is that we can sub-target things like the quantum drive, right? So even if, and again, I've said this multiple times, I don't expect an arrow or a gladius to be able to take down a big ship, right? But I really hope that light fighters, they will be partially useful in dealing some damage to these subcomponents right um so they can be a little bit more precise with their aiming because sure. yeah you know perhaps they like can once go and shields are down yeah yeah it, it, exactly like you know um and once you've dealt some damage to the quantum drive for example 
maybe it takes longer for the quantum drive to spool. You know, maybe you deal some damage to the engines and they can't, they don't have the level of acceleration or they don't have the top speed, mm. you know. Um, yeah, that, that's basically, that's, basi that's, that's a good thing you said just now in the end. Uh, that's how I kind of was talking about this nerve curve, right? Uh, I had in my mind personally that will take into the account the maximum ability of a ship to pull out G's, right? And then it will get from that number, it will get the maximum speed. And the moment you breach uh, the SCM limit and go towards that maximum speed that is defined by the G's, you get it slower and slower and slower. And for example, the like it's harder to get to like the maximum speed. And for example, uh, you need those G's to kind of fight the invisible like drag that is not actually a drag, but it like limits your acceleration closer you are to the maximum speed. And if one of your engines go out, for example, because it's destroyed, right? You have less G's on a forward push, right? And then the maximum is lowered, right? Mm. So those things could be kind of cool right but like who knows who knows what what's what, what cag is actually thinking and yet again i want to just make a point to like all the viewers we're not saying we want to put no effort right uh into doing stuff right uh what the point is even with all the effort put in it's just still impossible for certain ships that are just by whatever reason are set to just go insanely fast as a maximum mm. speed. That's all we want to put all the effort. Like the the only thing for like people who play this game on a competitive level for like years and years uh, to keep them rolling to to actually be interesting is to put insane amount of effort to achieve a goal. Right. So we're all up for the effort. It's just sometimes the game just tells you no. No matter what you do just get right it yeah. doesn't matter even like like yeah if you you gather like 40 people to deal with one person yeah you can kill it but you will not get your fun piracy because like it goes you know 1300 now moist moist touches on we have to bring the combat speeds down okay totally they tried, right? They tried with this combat speed thing, saying that you're. They didn't try. I'm sorry. They didn't try. Well, no, I agree. It was. It was, it was not the. They, were, it, they didn't think it through very much. I think it was very obvious that it was not. Why work. would you think, right? And I, I don't normally like to be this critical, uh, yeah. or pick on work that people have done because I'm sure these guys had the best. These guys are awesome, hard. and and we um, respect them. But we, when we disagree with something we do, think... we can. Why would you think nerfing the offensive capabilities of a ship would slow down combat speeds? Yeah, exactly. Because all you're going to do is end up with two ships going fast and nobody can fucking hit each other. Exactly. The, o the only situation it works perfectly in is atmosphere is, is pretty nice because you are limited in the speed yeah. or get like like game limitation on the, the speed that you can go. And combat... Feel, combat to me as a non-combat player doing the vandal mask thing felt awesome because we were limited in speed and it felt i felt that when i won those fights that i outskilled them and it was cool yeah, it, it, it's not only for you for everyone that there yeah. is a reason why why mr dark law actually prefers right that yeah because it's it's much more fun when you yeah. commit to a fight you commit to a fight Absolutely. You cannot just shift W away when you see yeah. like, oh, my shields are down. Oh, now, gone. now, what I was going to say is how? How do we slow down combat, combat speeds when a player so, does not want to engage in combat? So there is two things to understand here, right? Uh, again, that's my personal. That's mm -hmm. just my personal. I might be wrong. You, you, anyone can say I'm wrong. So uh if we talk about that uh nerve curve i was talking about earlier right so the idea is the faster ship should be able to disengage if he's not damaged from the uh from the heavier ship right it makes sense if you're in a light ship you gotta disengage and the if a, a heavier Co ship color to jump in real quick the heavier ship in 
the scenarios that we're really discussing on the show is the Carrick, which is the faster ship now. So you're you're making no, no, no. the assumption that it should be the slower ship, correct? Or or I just no, want to make sure no. we're what on I'm the same talking page. About, right now, let's forget about the Carrick. We're just talking overall about the speeds, right? Okay. About the speeds, combat speeds. Let's even forget about the Carrick, right? So, for example, we let's take an Arrow and a Vanguard, right? Uh-huh. Arrow, higher acceleration, Vanguard, lower acceleration, right? So mm-hmm. if an Arrow wants to disengage, obviously, as a light fighter, it has to, and the Vanguard pilot just has to deal with it. If an arrow is a full intact, engines are working, why there should be uh, like anything that would force an arrow to not disengage from a Vanguard, right? Okay. So, uh, but let's. So we have a scenario with uh, two ships being um, uh, having different acceleration, and for example, we have this nerf curve we were talk- I was talking about previously. So the moment, uh, the moment a ship breaches an SCM speed mm-hmm. and tries to go over it, right? Over it. So uh, it starts slowly because of like this invisible space drag, if you whatever, just something that slows down. The further he goes to the, to its maximum speed, the slower he can accelerate will bring him down. If a faster ship is chasing him, right? Uh, it will be able to catch up, right? And... Overall, the speeds should be brought down, definitely. Like, the maximums, they're just too much for the uh, too much for the current networking. I don't know. So I have, I have a few suggestions, and some of these are going to be controversial. Really? Um, but it's, I, I, I want to throw these out there, and whatever sticks, sticks, right? Yeah. So I, I, I quickly made notes, because these are things that I've talked about on my stream before, and mm-hmm. I knew I would forget while um, Cutlet was whittling on. Um, so I, with the Star Runner and the Nomad coming into the game, um, I think it's fair to say that they have some crazy fuel usage right now, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, this is something that's being debated, uh, within the community and, and something that was suggested was, well, maybe it's just, you know, eating up fuel when you're over SCM speed. Um, unfortunately that doesn't seem to be the case. However, I kind of like that idea, quite frankly. Yeah, I, I like just, the I idea. smiled when you brought it up. Yeah, I, I like the idea of being over SCM speed, ships starting to drink their fuel, because, again, something that CIG really keep hammering home on, and they've talked about for years, is player choice. It's all about player choice, player skill. And when you're in a fight, and say you're fairly equally skilled players, mm-hmm. um, it, it very often comes down to a war of attrition, right? Uh, who has the right amount of ammo left? Um, who has the right amount of fuel? And if you've got one player who's maybe boosting more, and I'd, I'd like to see maybe boost use hydrogen a little bit more, um, or they're going over SCM speed more, you know, they're not managing their speed and their boost. Um, I, I think that they should be penalized for that. You know, I know that sounds pretty uh, mean, but um, that's something I'd really like to see. Um, I we mentioned as well how um cig recently tried to uh bring combat speeds down but they nerfed the offensive capabilities which i think was silly let's think about actually nerfing the defensive capabilities yeah. over scm right um now this is where i think it's a little bit controversial um because there's I don't. in a lot of people's minds i think they can't see um how it would make sense but i'd like to see maybe power to shield being drained slightly so maybe shields drop to 75 percent or 50 percent of their capacity when you're within scm speeds maybe you can fire countermeasures slightly slower when you're over scm speed you know sure um the other thing we have to bear in mind um is something that we know is coming is capacitor gameplay i was right? i was and waiting this, for you to finish yeah. and i was going to bring it up yeah but this i'm glad you did something this is something that I've talked about a lot on my stream. It's something that I'm incredibly excited for. And I think capacitor gameplay might be one of the things that actually really helps mm-hmm. with this situation. And we, we're not entirely sure how it's going to look until it's in the game. Yeah. Um, I have a funny feeling CIG probably aren't that sure about how it's going to look until it's actually in the game and they've had to play around with it. Um, but that I'm not, it's not, let's not call it a Jesus patch in terms of uh, dogfighting, but I, I think it'll probably help quite a lot. And the other thing that I've seen some people suggest, which I, uh, we've had it before, 
um, and it comes straight out of Freelancer. And I know it might upset some people. This idea is a cruise drive where you are always flying at SCM speed. And if you want to go above SCM speed, you have to allow your cruise drive to charge. Very much like in the Freelancer game, if you take damage while it's charging, it slows down the charge. So while it's charging, you would have to fly evasive, which adds gameplay again. I see that as being a controversial thing to some what? people. Yeah, why? Now, why would you think that that would be controversial? Uh, may, because every time I brought it up in my chat, it's yeah, it's like people it's got usually one want... group of people who really want yeah. it, and another group of people who really hate that idea. It, it, yeah, you know? I think the only reason it might be controversial is because I think it it uh, shifts the balance maybe a little bit too far in the pirates' end. Yeah, possibly. I think you're right. Yeah. Um. So then there would have you would have to add something on top of that where they need you, to you, some sort of countermeasure. Yeah, the, or you couldn't affect would. the cruise drive if the shields yeah. are up or whatever. I mean, you can, yeah. you, like, it Definitely. doesn't, this isn't like a black and white thing. If the cruise drive comes mm -hmm. in and then bang, you know, everything like, else has to be exactly the same. Yeah. I I so, am not necessarily against that. You can even go, you can't go above SCM speeds without um, making certain decisions and trade-offs. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, so you can't, you don't need a cruise drive, but in order to go into cruise, it's going to take shutting your weapons down or something, you know, it could something, be anything. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I know you told me not to look at chat, but somebody mentioned e-warfare, right? And look and, at chat, but then this, bring it, bring it into the conversation. Don't directly so, engage with them because they're just trying sorry. to get a rise um, out of you. That's what I mean. Something, something that, and I, I, I'll use the prospect as an example, right? I mentioned earlier how um, I really do honestly think prospectors should be more defensive. And I don't, and when I say more defensive, I don't necessarily mean give it the whole HP of a hammerhead or, you know, give it the shields of a hammerhead. Um, it just needs something to survive and, and something, yeah. you know, I'm a, I'm a big Star Trek fanboy, right? And mm -hmm. I love it when you see them on the bridge of the ship the, the science officer and they're like how are we going to get out of this situation i know yeah. reverse the polarity of the so-and-so drive right yeah. i want that in star citizen i want an uh conventional ways of defending yourself so you know you have this ship that in theory should have quite a powerful scanner on it i think that if you are good at engineering you as the sole pilot on the uh, prospect of when we get e-warfare in the game should be able to somehow reverse polarity whatever of the radar and maybe use that to scatter some sort of e-warfare field or something that just scrambles radar just and scuff the radar for yeah. a few seconds you know yeah. and that's something i would like to see on those ships and in terms of the cruise drive maybe that's something um that could be applied to any ship if somebody knows you know it could essentially be a mini game my, my point is right um it, it's something that can be balanced right um Absolutely. i personally like the idea of a cruise drive um but yeah uh, it's like, i'm not against it drive, i'm yeah, not against it drive, uh, like, i usually call it the sub quantum right yeah. uh so basically utilizing your quantum drive to go like faster but not a quantum jump so it would kind of tied in in the same things if you're being quantum dampened you cannot activate that qu sub quantum right yeah. all that stuff so it can be like an, an interesting stuff to to get away it's like something you know I i'm gonna know. go into into like full space mining dad uh mode here too is there's a lot of there's not a lot but there probably will eventually be quite a few of these parasite type ships that do not have quantum drives and they're they're they have a very difficult time getting around the verse. It's been a meme. We take the Argo cargo ship and fly it down that. from Port Tressler to the event every yeah. day. It takes half an hour. It took me half an hour. Okay. But how immersive is it? It was amazing. It was amazing. It's only cool ones. Widow runs. Yeah. yeah, I was it, using car Argo Cargo to do widow runs to Yella directly from. Yeah, the it's hilarious. <laughs> it's it takes so long. It's insane. But the the idea of those ships having something like this this uh, cruise drive or something like that makes a lot more sense. And what a cruise drive can essentially be are these little spline jumps that we make around. Um, could even be even something a, like that, you know? 
it would be cool if it would be actually controllable, right? So you yeah. kind of navigate your ship. Basically, uh, you know, we had something like that that was uh, SCM speed and crew mode, right? Yeah, but then yeah, cruise the mode. crew mode, the cruise mode back then was the current around the current maximum speeds, right? It was like yeah. literally it, they just combined it. So uh, it would be cool to have this like cruise drive sub quantum whatever you call it to accelerate you uh if you manage to enable it then you're kind of out of combat right and um to let you go um like 10k per second for example something like that to to travel faster distances right in between like points to the planet but like not still quantum but 10k and then you can have like going into the atmo will actually make sense this this like re-entry burn-in effect right will yeah. make sense because you are actually at at a proper speeds for that to happen and then there could be a mini game where if you go too fast right your shields start to diminish for example right and you have to manage your speed not to just fall apart so the moment you take off the planet you kind of activate that drive right and then you go up from the atmo but you have to control your speed on how fast you travel to get out of the atmo and then quantum drive like properly like yeah do you see do you guys see like everybody who's listening like that what he just talked about had almost nothing to do with combat it was all these things that people that love the way the game looks feels the immersiveness like that was that whole thing he just talked about right and like i just wanted yeah, to it, make sure i highlight that 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 we're we're all here for something for the game to be better overall not to be better for combat pilots yeah it's not yeah. about like me wanting to have that exact thing with piracy because i will do it anyway one way or another it's just like representing because like the piracy combines a lot of stuff right a lot of Absolutely. knowledge combat yeah. knowledge you have to know trade it, traders you have to know miners everything and it combines a lot and you just see the picture and how like different play styles clashes together in, mm -hmm. in one spot and you just feel bad for it not working out like the way a player would expect to work it out i mean again player is a very uh, broad term like people are totally fine without running just with w that's fine uh it just like it just feels like kind of not not working out i don't know yeah it, uh, I'll I'll let you both respond to this, but put yourself in the other person's shoes. So I guess put yourself in my shoes. I try to put myself in in, in uh, your shoes as much as I can. What what is the what is the the perfect scenario or the perfect balance in in your mind of I like to use the Prospector as, as the best example because it's the ship that doesn't have, like, size 2 shields um, and, and stuff like that, where it could die in, in before you can even turn and, and, and try to engage or, or get out of the situation that you're in, especially on a surface. In an ideal world, how would that scenario play out in, and, and, and you get away? And in the ideal, really, when I say in the ideal world, I mean in the ideal world of where the game is as fun as possible for both players, the engaging you, generally as, and the one trying to disengage. It, as I was, I, you know, I've used the prospector as an example a couple of times already, yes. and it goes back to what I was saying earlier. You know, I always try to be open-minded. Yeah, I'm into PvP, but it needs. You're right. It needs to be fun on both sides, and I'm. Yeah. I I always try to put myself in the other person's shoes. Yeah. Um generally i would like to see if we're talking about the prospector specifically it's an industrial ship it should be tankier the fact that it it dies in like that, three yeah. shots just blows my mind right surely yeah. you would like to have some level of protection in case a rock explodes in front of you right surely um but, but generally um the example that i used of you know once e-warfare is in the game you know being able to do something to maybe scatter radar um, I because you have to bear in mind, um, I get a lot of people coming into my stream and they're not necessarily PVPers, right? Sure. But Most they are. want Most to likely. learn, they want to learn just how to survive PVP encounters. Um, and, and fortunately with the prospector, 
Um, the, the first level of defense is just be aware of your surroundings, right? Uh, listen out for when it says contact. And the moment you hear contact, unless you necessarily have friends around you, uh, like, there, there, there are a lot of things that CIG can do, like, for example, not have it warn you of a contact when it's a party member or something like that, right? Yeah. Um, but generally, yeah, I, I would like to see Prospect as more tanky. I would like to see radar on Prospect at all times so they can be aware of what's going on around them. Uh, just, and some of, just some sort of countermeasure, but yeah. it needs to be a skill check on both sides. And it comes down to who wins and who fails those skill checks. So, right? yeah, that's, I guess, what I'm asking is describe the skill checks. Uh, paying attention. As I said, it comes. Paying fact, attention paying is, world, is, of course, is is the first. Yeah, paying attention is 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 freaking crucial. Um, it's about your um, ability, I guess, to maneuver out of that situation in the first place. Once mm -hmm. they actually catch up with you, what do you do once they caught up with you? Because they will catch up with you. The prospector isn't necessarily fast, and I, I don't think it should be fast. I think it should be tankier, and I think. Um, it shouldn't necessarily be as fast as a light or a medium fighter, especially when it's loaded. I don't think actually being full of or makes doesn't any matter difference currently, there, but right? it probably will. Um, yeah, exactly. So when the mass increases, um, but I, I don't necessarily know what those skill checks would be once you catch up with them. I do like the idea of um, having some sort of countermeasure to scramble radar for a limited amount of time, but the 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 combat pilot. Um, should be able to um, counter that in some sort of way if they know how to counter that. But it comes down to how CIG really choose to implement it. Like that That's the way that I would like to see it done. I would like to see it as some sort of radar scrambling. You know? Mm, okay. Like, it's also the thing with the prospectors, like, in future, because we don't have proper scanning right now, right? So we have this limited ping, and uh, it is like 20 kilometers. So Prospector right now, obviously, can just go to uh, any random location, and no one will ever find it. Uh, in future, um, obviously, we'll have deep, like, long-range scanning, right? Yeah, it can't be that way forever. <laughs> yeah, so we will kind of find that Prospectors, right? Uh, with scanning them down, triangulating or something, however CG does that. So I would really want prospectors to be able to react proactively. And if the proper equipment is on a prospector, he can see that something, someone is scanning, scanning for something. Because like you have this like emission bursts, right, of energy when you try to scan, uh, and you kind of it ticks in your head. Okay. Uh, the ping is going out. Someone is scanning around. Maybe that's another prospector looking for, you know, uh, minerals. And then you can hear it, like the, like the ping triangulates closer to you, right? And then you make a decision. Okay, I think someone is actually looking for me, right? Yeah. I gotta just bail. I gotta bail from here. Drop everything I'm mining. Just bail and change the location. That's a good point, actually. When you say drop everything you're mining. How about the expense when they friggin' yep. fling those rocks into a ship? How about the idea of when you're running in the prospector, you can drop the ore that you've been mining and just I think the ore in prospector you. is like dispersed. It's not like because when you jettison the ore, you can see just the dust going away. Yeah, so but it doesn't it... have to be that way in the future. Oh, yeah, right? no, you probably, could leave yeah. a cloud of rocks that could do just some drop, the Just drop the big bags into the cockpit of the chaser. Exactly, <laughs> right? You know. I mean, again, that, that when, ties when into you something. Drop those bags, when ahead, you drop those saddlebags, you could re reduce the mass of the prospect yeah, definitely, significantly definitely. to give it some additional acceleration and speed. And then imagine you know? if we go back to this nerve curve that I was talking about, right? The nerve curve we were talking about. So the lower your acceleration, the lower your ma is maximum speed. So you drop off the uh, mass, right? And your SCM speed increases and your uh, maximum speed increases. It's going to be pretty fun, yeah, all that stuff. And, like, I'm more of a hunting traders than miners, right? Noodle is more of a hunting miners. I, I'm more hunting I hunt traders. everybody, right? Yeah, yeah, so good he's an equal off. <laughs> yeah, on the side of a... If I was in a trader's shoes, what I really would like to have, again, a better 
environmental awareness, like proper understanding of targets. For example, it still bothers me that in game right now, only when a criminal target pops on your radar, it tells you content. Yeah. Right? It, it's insane. It's silly. It's wrong. It, it doesn't matter. Like the crim, crime set doesn't matter. If something pops up on a radar, you want to hear it. That's, that's, I don't know. For me personally, it's important. Sure. Like honestly. Uh, yeah. Awareness, better scanning possibilities. So you can see if someone is lurking around the outpost you're buying. Obviously, in a, secure systems like stanton is a semi-secure system i know a lot of people are delusional of stanton being a high security system read the description it is like the crime is on the rise so it is like semi-secure system so even in semi-secure systems like stanton i would obviously want to see better protection for outposts right so especially uh luke presley said that they are looking into removing the armistice zones on the outposts, that those places should be, be freaking... Ser- it's going to be a massacre. <laughs> those places should be surrounded with deadly turrets. And yes, I'm saying this as a pirate. I don't want this to be a one-sided game. People yeah. have to have protection. They should be surrounded by, um, uh, by turrets. Like there should be a proper reaction on law enforcement. They should literally, like in Eve, warp in into your face and start nailing you down if you are doing this, even in a semi-secure uh, system inside of a comlink, right? Inside of a comlink, they should be there, and boom, they are getting attacked. You're no longer chasing a caterpillar, for example. Another thing that I feel really bad for traders and miners is the way they relaxed the armistice zones and overall all the issue with pad ramming like i feel it's still a disgusting thing to do no matter if you're a criminal uh who when the bounty hunter is desperate enough to just ram you to send you to prison right or you are a trader who actually finished his gameplay loop and he's down at port olisa already landed on the pad and because a fucking prick just decides to ram him so he loses his all, he loses, right? It's going to be a disaster with the refining coming next patch. It's stupid. It's just bad. It's wrong. No matter what side I'm playing on, it's just wrong from every possible side, right? So, again, I've talked about it over and over and over again. Ships that are just spawned on the pads or in hangars... Uh, ships that are requested landing and are in a nearby vicinity, like like kilometer or two from the pad they're landing at or landed already at the pad, they should get an invincibility shield that will prohibit any kind of damage, including collisional damage. Yep. That's going to solve we... a lot of issues. A lot of probably... issues. We should probably bring this back to the speed discussion, but one last thing about prospectors that I would really like to see is considering it's a ship that's very reliant on scanning, I think it should have a slightly increased default scanning range or some sort of advanced scanner so they can see ships approaching from slightly further out. Or at least the option. Right. At least the yeah. option, right? So the like we've yeah. seen it on the ISC, they showed like you could choose who you're scanning for. You know, maybe yeah. while you're mining, that uh, you could possibly choose to switch away from rock scanning mm-hmm. to uh, ship scanning and really boost up that that thing. The one thing that I was um, that like going back to that the ideal situation. Uh, one of the ideal, I think, skill checks is something that could really possibly come into 312 and might be really interesting is the countermeasures so i see a lot of you guys uh when i'm watching your streams fire the chaff out and fly Mm -hmm. behind it yeah and like that that targeting reticle is now gone for that player right and i i know the bunny hop closer to people yeah Right, it, yeah. it's uh, it can go both ways in in that situation, but that's one of the the things that you can use to, um, 
give yourself that little bit of an edge to get away. But oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it would be really cool happen. if we had like um, forward firing chaff as well, I think. Yeah. So yeah, like, I mean, fire a couple of hundred meters ahead of yourself and kind of use it as a shield, essentially. Yeah. So even if you're not necessarily inside of the, the noise field, if you're hidden behind it, um, it should have a it similar works, effect. Yeah. Right. People give Elite Dangerous a, a hard time a, a lot uh, in oh, the Star Citizen community, but the idea of firing chaff in Elite Dangerous making your auto gimbals mm -hmm. go like this, um, yeah. you know, I I always thought that that was a pretty, pretty darn good design. They do a lot of yeah. things right in that game, yeah. quite frankly. I, I think it's a, it's a matter of, like, uh, all that stuff is a matter of, in future, in future imagine thing in Star Citizen, <laughs> uh, when... Uh, we will have more proper, like, gameplay um, with the signatures. I'm pretty sure in future it's going to affect the outer gimbals. Another good thing about the skill check is when you dogfight, you pop off a chaff, and two of your ships yeah. on a low speed end up in the chaff cloud. Yeah. And then where actually the skill shows when you can nail down the shots on the other dog, uh, on the other, uh, into them, like, ship yeah without having a readout on it and you you know where approximately is the pip and you shoot there blind and you see it connect that's like that's the one of the most crazy stuff that can happen in a chaff cloud back to speed probably right no i mean i think we kind of hit a lot of the 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 stuff on that I mean, what what more is is there? I would I think the only thing I would ask about speed is is there anything else you would add to it like our discussion here, because it's it's not this. I don't think it's this hyper complex issue that is a, a five hour discussion, but I think it's yeah, a, it's a major thing now that could be addressed with things like Noodle mentioned the capacitors and and many Definitely. other things that you guys mentioned. That could be coming soon. That people start, uh, that the general star system community start changing their minds or, and preparing for it now, or understand that um, that it's not avoiding combat. It's how to disengage from it is what yep. Yep. you know is 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 the big thing. Because I think a big problem with with the current game is is that we all. Once you're engaged in combat and you're and you're a non-combat player, you're dead. Let's not forget, guys. This game is intended to have major consequences for death. They don't have Definitely. them now, but they're intended to be there in the long term. So when we have discussions like this, it's a lot of it's for that that reason is that <laughs> you don't want to die. You want to disengage. And how are we gonna yeah. gonna do that in a way that I it's imagine... not ridiculous? You know? I imagine in the future, though, it will be more difficult to get kills on ships. In fact, they've talked about it, right? It when we have this flight component, yeah. ships shouldn't yep. just explode like they do now. Yep. Sure. They get disabled, yeah. right? Right. My personal standpoint is like, I want to kill the person I'm chasing. It's like the last option I want to go for. It's it's the least interesting one, right? Yeah. Uh, interacting with with someone, even if you're, it's like your victim, basically, is much more fun than just exploding their ship, right? So. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, like speeds definitely need to go down. Uh, accelerations, like it's fine. Uh, it just they should define the the top speeds, and then those top speeds should go down. Uh, just a comment on that. Like a star actually made a really good post. Um, do you mind if I pop it in the link in your Twitch chat? Yeah, I can bring it up. Um, um, as well, like a star made a really interesting post about um, ship speeds a couple of weeks ago. Um, and it's a really interesting read, and I pretty much agree with everything he said. In fact, he essentially mirrored... Uh, Give me a favor, just post it again. Uh, he essentially mirrored uh, Cutlet's thoughts um, regarding the... Hang on one second. Anybody can just repost it, yeah. That's fine. Okay. Um, regarding um, ship top speed, um, essentially being limited to... Uh, by its acceleration right oh definitely um, oh yeah i see the pictures yeah yeah, yeah. basically yeah, yeah. that's very something i'm talking about though i feel like you know there has to be still a force that will fight you mm -hmm. right when you breach the scm speed and the idea is 
uh, if you go like forward above SCM, you're fighting it with your main engines. The moment you rotate backwards to do the reverse key, you can no longer accelerate it that direction because yeah. your retros are weaker. And it will naturally, if people, if two guys are circling, right, each other in a fight, this maneuver will naturally drag them down to SCM speed because they just cannot like back paddle above, you know? Yeah, so, yeah and that, that's, that's the one thing post. about that post. That that post is very scenario specific. They're mostly talking about backpedaling, but it would essentially affect overall top speeds of all ships. So yeah, that's yeah. a good post. That's a good read, definitely. Yeah, yeah, and 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 as usual, uh, uh, there are, I just watched in chat that uh, people were saying. Don't mention the chat. <laughs> no, no, I'm like I'm I don't care if you do. Up, yeah, bringing up that point that. Uh, uh, of like effort I was describing, right, with yeah. lots of people. And uh, then someone said like, hey, but that guy uh, placed in an effort of like, you know, mining and uh, and then grinding that money to put up into his cargo. But why people think when they put like effort into that and they feel entitled nothing should happen to them if you go solo just take another route that is not more popular you know yeah. or put put up an effort to at least get turret gunners on the carrack that's pretty deadly i must say hey, people don't realize how i deadly went up against the carrack actually a couple of weeks ago which had uh, gunners in it who were actually capable of hitting targets yeah. it was kind of you can get wrecked very easily yeah. Yeah. very especially in atmo if he if he drags you in atmo you can be dead very quickly the the one thing about that that comment i think is really important to recognize is that the effort made to mine everything is an effort that definitely is a thing but yes. it is not the effort that should be part of the equation that we're discussing the effort yeah. it's like in the equation the that we're discussing is is not is same as the effort to find the miner is not part of this equation either. Exactly. It's, it's exactly. once you find the person, once yeah. we are now engaged with each other, it's the effort to take you down or out versus the effort to disengage. That is exactly. the, the, the main part that is super important. And yeah, I totally agree yeah. because yeah. the effort that you did to mine, it gave you money already, right? It yeah. gave it to you. There you go, your money. You're up to whatever you want, right? Well, it gives it to you that once you've actually effort. sold it and are safe. But yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, like, if you mine that money in advance, yes, you did the effort, and uh, you had your AUC when you sold it, right? Mm -hmm. That's the end result of that effort, and then it's up to you what you want to do with them again. But you cannot, like accumulate all that effort into one scenario then and say hey but i've like been working i've been playing this game like for 10 years and now i'm making a cargo run while i'm getting killed right sure now we got three people in the call list we actually had like five or six earlier but i guess they I thought so they were going to be able to come he's right been, in he's been sat there for so long <laughs> yeah yeah but that's uh, like when i think most of them know that when we have guests we talk for about an hour and then we then we take uh -huh. callers so i mean we've we've had the show for a while a lot of these guys are pretty regular so let's bring in our first caller. His name is C Dizzle. He is um, he goes back to the callers on the Redacted podcast. So maybe he'll uh, he'll OG uh, bring caller that in. an OG caller. Yeah. What's up, C Dizzle? Hey, what up? How you doing, dude? I haven't talked to you in a long time. Oh. So yeah, I'm, ha I'm happy you minute. called in. Yeah. So. Uh... Typically, when I come on these things, I'm the super outside-in perspective because I stopped playing a long time ago. Yeah. So I actually super appreciate like the long call or like the long guest talks because it really brings me up to speed. Mm. Um, but I'm just gonna talk for like it sounds like what the middle ground here wants is like some sort of like monster hunter style gameplay, where describe it because I've never target, played. It. There's a target and a hunter the hunter ambushes the target and they've got to try to force that target into a fight because all that target wants to do is get the hell out of dodge mm. yep is that po is that possible in a game like star citizen though it could be yes. but like most games are so rigid where uh there's like uh you are now engaged in combat you have a timer in which you can engage your drive 
for two minutes, Ultimately, right? No, no, no. I absolutely like, think we will get that type of gameplay, and I okay. think Pyro will might be the first time we actually see it. Because in what way? if you you have to bear in mind that Pyro is a fairly lawless system. Sure. Right? So if you have a system like Pyro that is full of bastards like me, Cutler, and Shadow Moses, right? And you're a little guy in a prospector, and you realize that you slowly have this group of people all descending <laughs> on you, but you have one uh, jump Exit gate point. to get through to get yeah. back, right? I think we'll ult we will ultimately end up with that. Not in all scenarios, but in that type of scenario specifically, I, I absolutely think we will. Gotcha. So like, okay. if I was the miner and I didn't engage in combat with you and you were just constantly yeah. shooting at me, I have the out and you yeah. can't follow. Because okay. we get that similar type of combat in EVE Online, right? True. For those of you who play EVE Online, you probably know what I'm talking about. Like when you go into yep. low sec systems and you end up with a group chasing you, they camp the gates. You know, and it can be pretty freaking scary, you know. Hmm. Now, Pyro being a lawless system, I wonder if the gate would be it. Maybe, maybe on that side, it would make maybe. sense that it would, you know. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so if the goal is how do we get those types of scenarios amongst all scenarios, we have to examine how do people engage in combat and how do people escape combat. And that's where the speed topic comes into play, right? Yeah. So. No matter what, if we're looking at the problem of who gets to go faster and who has to go slower, it's always going to come down to just a sheer numbers balance. But if we look at the escape mechanism as what's my total max speed, the question should be how do I get there and how does the people who are trying to interfere with that stop me from getting to that max speed? So if hitting systems is more about stopping them from getting to that full acceleration and less about destroying that component specifically mm. you can actually build in interaction for how you're escaping like am i actively turning so they're not affecting my acceleration yeah. I, I i understand what you mean when you bring up the moon because i i have played monster hunter right so you end up you're chasing the monster you have an engagement you deal some damage to it you may be uh, knock some armor off or whatever, and it manages to escape, right? And then you got to go on the hunt again, and you're constantly catching up with it, doing more damage. And I, I love that idea. Like, you have this big lumbering ship, maybe, I won't mention a Carrick, I'm sorry, but say a Hull E, right? And you're you're slowly damaging one of the engines on the Hull E, the, the retro thrusters, whatever, the mav thrusters, it manages to get away. You manage to catch up with it again until eventually you overcome it, right? And you finally managed or to fail it. or fail yeah, yeah absolutely because um, i i think when you're sitting like let's say you're in that prospector right and you're doing your whatever prospectory stuff your engine isn't putting all of its output into your engines mm -hmm. or your your power source isn't putting all of its effort into your engines no, so when you hit that out. throttle you shouldn't be you shouldn't have access to a hundred percent engines it should have to i agree go like yeah, and the interaction <laughs> should be you stopping yeah. how fast you get to that hundred percent. Yeah, mm. that's actually another point. Yeah, I was bringing up this pull up of the engines. I feel the bigger the engines are, the bigger thrust it gives, like the absolute number of thrusts. Right, not the acceleration, but the thrust it gives to push the mass of the ship right the bigger those engines are longer they have to spool up mm. right to get to 100 effectiveness and i'm saying not like a second i'm saying like if it's a massive ship it should go like i don't know 10 seconds spool up the good point in that if we even if we remove the chasing scenario right now in piracy scenario the the good part in doing that will actually make it uh, kind of cinematic. We will see less of vertical takeoffs because you will need to fight gravity more of a, like actual cool, like we all want takeoffs from planets and all that where you have to first like use your verts to like uh, elevate off. yourself yeah. a bit. Yeah, lift off, then you push up the throttle, right? And you slowly start to spool up. Then, when you gain a bit, a bit of like lift, you can start like pointing your nose up. 
is going to be actually very good. And, and, it, and it will also be one step to balancing like smaller ships towards the bigger ships. The, the more th- thrust, I know Noodle loves this word, I'll, I'll say I it love again. Thrust. thrust. The more thrust <laughs> one single engine gives you, uh, longer it takes to spool. So then the ships can be like, you know, designed in future and the current ships like they're bigger engines on it and then they're like supportive engines that are smaller that gives less thrust but they spool up faster to get the initial push to the ship and all that right Mm -hmm. that could be cool yeah and the one thing i think you kind of touched on is why a ship like the the carrick or anything larger tends to have the higher top speeds is exactly what cutlet said is i think the larger engines they determined would have more thrust because they were larger and that's the idea of why they probably have these higher top end speeds nah, but... it, it, i i would i would i would argue on that because in okay. the end in the end uh, your acceleration is your thrust to mass ratio right so if you have big thrust and low mass your acceleration initially should be insane right yeah. and you will naturally have a higher speed if we define higher speed by the accelerations but if the acceleration of a carrick uh is like four g's or whatever it is right front without afterburner that means that yeah it has a lot of thrust but it has so much mass yeah it just it, it just still the low acceleration because yeah. someone was talking about like back back at the start of the discussion about like fighting the inertia and then like because of the bigger thrust it can overcome the net it's it's like makes no sense in terms of physics there is like there is the acceleration is defined by the thrust and basically the the ratio between thrust and mass that's it yeah no yeah i i know i'm just i was just trying to point out that like i think that that was their um like intention intention yeah yeah but then again they're not consistent with that like no uh so 890 is not the fastest ship right it has insane thrust right because its engines are insane right even more than a in a, more than a carrot right but it still goes slower okay in before in 312 uh 890 is the fastest shipping game um ships have like power cores or whatever that shit's called yeah right? power plants oh, yeah power plants so like i think it should be tied less like a lot to engines but more to that uh how much mass that power source can move how much energy it can produce to yeah. push that thrust yeah because if you don't have like if you've got the biggest baddest engines in the world but like a little baby dick power source like what are you really going to be able to do with that oh yeah that that's capacitor thing yeah. that will be coming like, and we'll see how well, that works right yeah 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 Sorry, I was going to say something, but no. I'm not. no go ahead. Sorry, I'm talking. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, I'm so sorry. I always I get to podcast. I'm like fucking. I, I, too much. I'm, I'm just really no, excited for good, the, the gameplay, to be honest with you, because I'm, I'm just interested to see how they're going to implement it. Well, know? I think that could um, tie into what this was saying too. Is, is I think you get more of those, um, the chase, because yep. they have yeah. to choose. They, they choose to. Let's say the, the person trying to escape will choose to. Because I think they, they correct me if I'm wrong, but they imply that capacitors would play into not only your weapons, but it would play into your uh, boosting and your thrusters and, and everything, right? So um, I don't know if there would be individual capacitors for each or whatever, but the idea is that that player would have to choose to put that into an escape maneuver or whatever at the time, and then, you know, it, it becomes that chase, and then you pick off, pick off a little bit of the the engine or the power plant or whatever you're you're doing to try and and win that engagement if it's to kill the player or if it's to disable the player or, or whatever right and and that yeah, could be where dizzle gets the the idea of what he want wants out of the this situation yeah absolutely Might i think uh, something i was going to say as well um, is you know sure. when we think about you know the way the game works right now and and how it should be balanced we're thinking about the stanton system we're not thinking across multiple systems right because jump Which i mean ultimately we should be like well i i mean it's it's crazy but i i guess i'll ask you guys do you expect to be chasing people um f- through jump points and this many quantum travels and uh we're talking like hour-long not, chases 
So if you're a I bounty think, hunter. Yeah. I think if True. you're an individual person, um, maybe not. I like we we were talking earlier on. I'm not saying no. Um, yeah. but for example, say the golden eggplants, right? Mm -hmm. uh, pirate org, uh, cutlass org, and they are a group working as a group. And mm -hmm. say you have a group of them um, jump point camping in pyro, and then you have a group of them on a particular moon or a planet where they think somebody's mining. They manage to flush that person out, right? But say they have a fast quantum drive and they manage to get to the jump point before the guys, you are, they already have people at the jump point, right? Yeah. So the person that's trying to escape has to somehow try to navigate past those people. And then even if they make it into the jump point, they might chase them through the jump point into Stanton. So um, will we, because some systems can be massive. Something that people don't take into account with Stanton is that Stanton isn't actually the biggest system in the game. It's, it's actually like not four... that big. For uh, AU, I think Pyro like... is going to be considerably bigger, right? So, quantum across an entire system going into a jump point, and then you're probably not going to have enough quantum fuel when you get through the jump point, right? To do any significant jumping. Um, mm. so I don't will we see people going through system jump point system jump? I don't think so, not like Eve Online. Um, but if you're smart and you're working as a group, you can essentially, uh, I'm not going to use. I'll use it. Tag team, right? Mm -hmm. And you're essentially tag teaming uh, to make the most of the fuel that you have between you. Obviously, you'll have uh, refueling ships and stuff like that to go. It's it's just again, it's where all this kind of um, comes together. Finally, comes yeah. together. Yeah, you know? it's like Pyro is what four or five times bigger than Stanton, and that's still not the biggest system, right? So, I would not. Use... I would not look at those at, at numbers at all. As, well, as I'm looking things. at the star map. That, that's Don't. what that's what at least what we have, like of sure. whatever knowledge we have. So uh and that kind of makes sense because maybe not exact numbers, because like look at the quantum drives we have, right? We have like if you go XL1 or something, you're just so much over the limit of the Stanton, you always want to go the top fastest quantum drive starting with size two ships even in si some size yeah. one ships that have the extended fuel tanks like the new nomad uh having 770 quantum fuel right so there is diff there is definitely uh going to be bigger systems and prior should be bigger than stanton by all the knowledge we've had prior to this moment so like even like you will make decisions with what quantum drive you take to stanton do you really want to go XL1 and then try to refuel somewhere or you want to have a lower quantum speeds? And then answering the questions of, uh, are we going to chase that person? Are we going to chase the jump on? That's like, there's so many factors to that. Are we, go, are we going to have like the proper scanning systems to actually find where that person ran away from if, if he manages to escape, right? Uh, if we don't, probably we're not going to chase them. What cargo is scanned, right? What what he had? Is it worth chasing him yeah. through the whole pyro and then to Stanton, where police is already like intact, right, and working the the law system? So yeah, it's like a question you cannot actually answer yeah. until you are there in the exact situation and you know you scan the guy. What do you want to do with them? Yeah, well, I, I mean, say... among these larger oh, systems, aren't we going to be traveling through those jump points more so than quantum? Yeah, like that's kind of what the argument I was going to make. This is like super off topic, but not really, is the the idea of these systems being larger. I think the game just gets larger because the systems are connected together. And that's where your quantum drives are balanced. It's less of the, uh, how long is my jump across the system? Rather than, uh, rather than that, I think it's mind, more... You have to jump from one minor, jump point to another jump point still. Yeah, if you're a yeah. miner and you're mining in pyro, you might not have anywhere in pyro safe to dock to sell your ore. Right? Yeah, you have to come. I mean, I, I sincerely so hope through. that's the plan. Is that you know? Is that you don't because we're taught? I mean, they have reputation and all that stuff. Is that uh, you have to leave pyro to sell, and the I risk. Hope so isn't yeah. you mining there the risk is how you get out with with the booty yeah 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because you like, essentially it, what you could do is organize, right? And I, I know that some people are terrified of the idea of communicating with other players, God forbid. Um, <laughs> but, you know, Hello, you organize a group mining scenario, right? And then you essentially say, okay, we're hiring this security org uh, to clear out the jump point at a specific time so yeah. we can get out, yeah. right? And to just cause chaos. Can you imagine the fun? Because then the douchebags like me and Cutlet get the the PV. Well, me, Cutlet doesn't really want these engagements, I guess. But I get the dogfighting engagements that I want at the jump point, right? Um, the security guys who also like dogfighting get their engagement, and then the miners get their friggin' ore, right? Yeah. It's a win for everybody. And then pirate and Cutlet doesn't. Get no, miners die, pirate. and we get all the ore. I'm sorry, noodle. That's not how it works. <laughs> um. All right. So I oh, would no. say. Dizzle, it, we, is there anything else you would want to add or, or discuss on this? Um, no, I think I'm pretty good. Yeah. I like, I like now that I understand. Come. Yeah, man. It's, it's all good. I, it, I love the uh, Monster Hunter thing now that I understand what you It was a really good viewpoint. About. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Totally. totally. Thank you, Dizzle. It was, good. it was great talking to you again. Yeah. Don't be a stranger, man. Talk to you soon. Sure. Later. Later dude. All right. So the next caller is the Q. He was in the Q, and now he's in the call. How you doing, man? Doing all right. How you, Gary, for doing? Yo, doing yo, right? how, how dare you? Never <laughs> <in my> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, on the uh, speed topic. I did say this in chat, and Noodle did respond in actual chat. How dare you! But he? Uh, there are fourteen ships faster than the Carrick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We're just using that as the example, right. but I mean, well, that's, that's the that's thing the that I problem. see a lot on <laughs> streams. People complaining: Carrick so fast, Carrick so fast, Carrick. So... There are fourteen ships with weapons faster than the Carrick. Yeah. The... So, so the the here's here's what I would like to say, mm-hmm. real quick. Um, when it comes to speed, the first thing we have to understand is one, we, we've, we've suspended disbelief in the fact that there's a top speed in space, right? Mm-hmm. Because of gameplay mechanics. We've discussed that. But so that's the first thing we've suspended that disbelief. Assuming that, why would any ship be faster uh, as far as top end speed than another ship? In space, the only thing that really matters is acceleration. Right, as Noodle exactly. point, I'm sorry, as Space Cutler pointed out earlier, with it, all it is is the amount of thrust or force versus the amount of mass. Mm. That's it. So, why would one ship not be able to obtain the max speed over another ship? I liked where, um, and I'm going to give credit where credit was due, uh, Galathir Games. I talk with him a lot, and he had a, a fairly unique take on this. And he's not here, so I'm going to go ahead and paraphrase what I believe he said. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, all ships would have the same max top speed, but each ship has the, the defining factor is the acceleration for said ship. Mm-hmm. He said he would further compound that with, say, say there's a max speed. We're just going to use round numbers, for example, because we're not going to go all crazy. A thousand is your standard max speed, sure. but if you turn off your shields, you can get to 1,200, and if you turn off your shields and your weapons, you can get to 1,400 type of deal which starts giving you this gameplay mechanic in which, say you have a Carrick that only has four Gs of thrust, which means it can only get up to top, it'll take X amount of time to get up to top speed. And you have a chase vehicle, we'll call it the, the Vanguard, and it has nine Gs of thrust. It's clearly going to be able to catch up to said Carrick, unless the Carrick was already at or very near top speed already. It's mm-hmm. going to be able to close a lot of that gap. I like that. that is point, the only, can I jump in just one second? Mm-hmm. It, can we assume that we're only talking about space combat? Because there's obviously yes, yes. top speeds but, in atmosphere, right? I mean, right, that's, but, that's but, obviously a clear thing. That's a thing. Yeah, well, I'm only talking space because in, okay. in in atmosphere, I mean, clearly we've we've had those other discussions on uh, Berks' stream lately, where in Atmo the arrow should be the dominant ship, and it's clearly not. Right? <laughs> it's it's clearly not. You know, you put a vanguard in there, and you just kind of rotate around and you know the arrow uh, cannot so outwind it. That's a that. different discussion. <laughs> it depends yeah, on the pilot, that. I think. It Somebody in a vanguard about. who knows what they're doing in atmosphere is deadly. Yeah. But right, if yeah, it's so yeah, in space. Very good. So in yeah. space, if if yeah. that were the case, and then said uh, 
person could choose like the 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 person with a cargo in a caterpillar for example can say oh i don't need weapons i need to power down my weapons to get a little bit extra speed so i can start getting away well the the chaser could then go well i don't need shields i can power down my shields i i, I need the 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 weapons as a matter of fact i don't even need my weapons right now i need to make sure i turn both of those up to give me even an extra little boost until i catch up and close the gap in which time i can turn on my my weapons and now we're both he has shields on i have weapons on our top speed is now the same we're, we're now in a situation right there the point i was making is i think there are other mechanics that i think they could incorporate if they aren't afraid and, and i know we all no one wants them to reinvent the wheel right because they've done that so many times on so many things and just delays 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 but i do think they need to reevaluate how space combat is going to look with this new uh everything needs to be in scm speed to to really be able to fight and I, that's just my opinion on, on that and it's just an opinion obviously. can i can, can can i can i answer that mm -hmm. yeah so uh, I know one game where there is, I know one space game where uh, there is a singular maximum speed. It's just a matter of uh, uh, of acceleration to get to that speed. And uh, you know how most of the chases end up in a stalemate. In a stalemate. And imagine a mantis with a bubble chasing the carrack infinitely until with thirty k. Well, and that's my when I said there are fourteen ships faster than a Carrick, that was one but of the things that I was going to mention because Noodle not, said, "Well, which how many of them have QEDs?" So you're saying the QED ship should be the fastest, therefore creating all these stalemates where no one's ever able to escape them? I don't think that's fair. I, I'm, I'm not. I mean, obviously there are things you can do, but I think just that statement alone is a little unfair, a little but bit. And we also run into the issue. Um, in that at that speed, even after I, I I do not believe for a second that CIG will ever manage to completely solve desync. And at a thousand twelve hundred meters per second or whatever, um, there is going to be a level of desync there. And even if you're trying to shoot, that's probably going to be a bear component. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're not going to be able to do it. So how do you slow down these big ships? What like what do you do? Agreed. I, I think hit those subcomponents. And if you can't use a QED, right? So say you're yeah. a, a you know, there's there's two or three light fighters, or maybe a light fighter and a heavy fighter, whatever. You know, what can they do? When I when I first found out about the QED, I made this video on my YouTube channel. It's probably a horrible video. It was probably really poorly worded, but I was screaming at the top of my lungs that the idea of a QED was so dumb because the in a way that, like, I get it, you want to have this component that's a trade-off for having this skill to, t to prevent a ship from quantum traveling. But the whole thing is, is you should have the ability, not every time, not in every situation, but to prevent a quantum travel without needing to click a button. It should be a skillful thing, like, for example, Agree, actually. Uh, firing a quantum, uh, like, you know, shooting at the quantum driver, selecting that. But even that, I think, is almost too easy of a situation it, there should have there should be multiple ways to prevent somebody from quantum traveling but it should there should be multiple ways to or at least a, a another significant way for that player trying to escape it it, it should Something, always be i i look, i'm gonna upset some people now when i balance. say this but um i'm gonna bring up elite dangerous again um, one mini game that Elite Dangerous does really well is dragging people out of. Yeah, consoles. I've only like, been then, that in, is a in the I'm is, being dragged. Well, how does that scenario work? Can you explain it's it? It's the same both sides. Both sides. You're both fighting okay. each other with the same mini game essentially. Like, yeah, it, it's it's very mini game ish, right? I would I would hope for something a little bit more immersive in Star Citizen, right? Yeah. But my point is that there's a really cool skill check either side right yeah. um and i'd love to see something like you... the skill check Cut shouldn't the... be the ship no well, exactly is, is my argument I against the that. qed I agree with that, Mike. The, you know. the skill check should not be the ship that that was my argument yeah. against the qed and why i said it was mm -hmm. stupid um yeah and, and that's maybe maybe the the quant the the qed drive is a trade-off that you decide to make um and it should be a significant one, whether yeah. I just don't think the Mantis ever made sense. I think it should be a component that you swap in and out of a ship. But. 
Um, oh yeah, yeah. It, it's gonna be a component. It's just like with a lot of things in uh, Star Citizen, also marketing, they first do stuff like that is bound to a ship, right? Yeah. It's like it's the main feature. So the main feature of Mantis is literally the only thing it can do. Yeah. Right? It has, that is, well, it it has gets zero protection. Really well. yeah, yeah. There, it has zero protection, right? The proper it's trade-offs somewhat, are there for that. Yeah, ship. yeah. The proper trade-offs are there. And it's a totally a support ship. You don't operate it alone. That means you're already investing into a party. You're just a mm-hmm. part of the support crew, right? So I don't feel it's like bad to have a mantis right in future we will have utility slots you can place like tractor beams you can place like maybe smaller mm-hmm. qed devices yeah. i don't know it's just a mantis is built around the qed device and it, the, it's kind of fine for yeah, now right the problem is the qed device is limited to number of ships for now and the the in and more importantly and i think that's what most of the discussion uh the q and and, and we're having here right now is the the prevention of someone getting away which is typically the prevention of, of allowing somebody to get to the uh altitude in which they can quantum drive or quantum travel and and so on and I, my my argument with everything is i think the big skill check should be for the uh engaging player the the player who is chasing to prevent that uh whether it's uh you know getting the the, the fire on properly and then uh i think in every scenario and and guys you're you're the ones who would be in this uh the chasing scenario i think the chaser should have the more like are would we agree that the ch- skill checks should not be equal in every scenario that the yeah, person who's definitely. chasing no stand, the defender has the advantage yeah the defender in, should have the advantage open, this definitely. is where i'm bad with I words agree. i should have just said it that yeah. way but yeah thank you i agree that the, if we're discussing piracy Pirates should put in much more effort. I totally agree. In an agree with open that. world okay. game, you should be doing as much as you can to prevent the other party from having an advantage over you. Exactly. Right? That's your main thing to do, right? They sh- it should never yeah. be fair. If you want fair, go play Arena Commander. Agreed. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. As, at least in this scenario. The fair so I would say one more thing in regards to to speed. Um, yeah. If if we've already suspended our disbelief in in the the fact there's a max max speed and all these other things, and then we further compounded by saying, oh, the 890 jump is so massive it can only get to 900 meters per second, implying that mass has some sort of relevant factor in top speed in this new reality we live. Then my argument would be a empty prospector would have the amount of thrust, uh, well, a full thrust prospector with all the weight of ore in there those thrusters would be massive to move that ship so an empty prospector would be able to just haul butt right so the what uh, i think one of the things that they could do for a prospector is the choice especially with death of a spaceman where your your character is more important than the ore yeah. that you could dump ore now exactly. get to some some yeah. new max they touched speed on that earlier. And, and, and save life right yeah, yeah I, exactly. I know they did i just wanted to dump ore fire chaff yeah exactly. boost Boost away, yep, yep, yeah. exactly. That's what I was saying. If 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 we define the maximum speed by the acceleration, that means dropping mass would increase the acceleration. Yeah. You easily get out of combat. You try to easily at least get out of combat, and you have the max bigger maximum speed, and then boom, you're gone. The it's issue, a decision, right? The make. issue is is the my, okay. This is where it's a, a we're not talking about speed, but we are. Uh, the miner has the ability to drop the ore. The miner didn't pay for the ore, right? So right. the 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 loss of wage there is potential wage and not actual loss of UEC. Not investment, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Not not investment. Because right. the cargo hauler is in the exact same scenario as the miner when they're trying to get away. But he where's invested. the yeah? But he's invested now. However, in, in some scenarios he's invested. I imagine that most of the cargo experiences in the future will not be commodity trading. They will be cargo missions where you're only investing time. Agree. And the, and the yeah. NPC is the one investing the money. Yeah. So However, I would say rep, this. But you I'm do sorry, lose rep in that scenario. He was trying to talk. Sorry. Go ahead, Q. Oh, I was just going to last thing in that. Uh, that was actually my last point. So you, you led right to it. My last yeah. point that I was going to mention was 
now take it over to the cargo where you have an investment. So just dumping that investment is very costly. Yeah. Cargo ships such as let's just again, let's use that magical Carrick thing we got here, which is awesome. A fully crewed Carrick is a beast to kill if it's it's actually fully uh, manned. I, I'm not so much on the get an escort. We've all talked about that in the past, but a fully crewed Carrick will kick the snot out of two light fighters or th even three light fighters. If you have competent people manning those big size four turrets on there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's where I think it's and then go to the Caterpillar, maybe make the, the turrets more than what they are. So if someone has someone in the turret, that's going to be way more powerful than having an escort that it's just going to be way more powerful and be able to yeah. defend yourself, to give you Unless some options. Caterpillar, surely you can just start flinging parts of the ship at whoever's... Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's again, that's, we're like deviating badly, but that leads us to the point I was always do making with the turrets, no matter how well the CG did the job with the turrets, I feel there is a necessity in another pass that will add something that I call sticky aiming, uh, which will actually rotate the turret. Because that's the specific scenario we're talking about. It's fighting in a turret light fighters. That's what you actually supposed to do in most cases to yes, defend a bigger a ship from a, from a lighter target, right? So what I call sticky aiming, if someone played... Uh, world of Warships, they know what that is. When you snap to a target, your turrets rotate with the center of mass of the target, right? Ah, okay. But, I agree but with you. You still actually. aim the pip. Yeah. yeah. You mm. still aim the pip, right? So they critically need to add this to turret gameplay because you will still have to put an effort to hit especially a smaller target but you're but not fighting you're, the pilot as much you're not fighting the freaking rotations which is yeah. the most annoying thing you can do in a turret right mm -hmm. that, that's the, that annoys and then a carrick fully manned uh against the light threat it will just deal with it yeah. And Can then, I just point out it's somebody who's a pirate that is recommending this? Yes, it's he is. Not yes. a miner or want, a trader recommending this. I want this. To right. traders to have better protections. I want mm -hmm. them to stop running out of excuses. And I want challenge. That's the first thing I want. Because without the challenge, the game isn't interesting, right? Yeah. And then if you solo man the Carrick, just expecting nothing to happen, I'm sorry, I'm not even answering that, right? Yeah. I'm not even answering. I'm not even debating on <laughs> how can you run away, how can you rot run away, what's your top speed, what your previous time investment was in the money. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just not debating I mean, that. I mean, the the way you should like the ideal. Okay, okay, I think that's perfect that that you said that too. Is because I oh what I keep saying is is that it should be difficult for the person who's running away to just run away and pl and press w but maybe just pressing w could be a scenario that could work if you have other people in the turrets helping you if because it's not just pressing w then if you have an engineer that's aiding you in pressing w routing all the power uh perfectly to this the, to the components that you need to get out as fa fast as possible whether it's a cutlet scenario or making your acceleration uh higher or whatever um yeah like i i don't get why people want to play solo in <laughs> non-solo ships right it's so frustrating oh, give me a second there's someone said then why go for traders i have an answer give me a second don't don't go <laughs> to chat <laughs> I have all right guys uh i want to say uh pigtail says hi oh. she loves you all uh oh. i don't want to eat up all your time i know you got another caller mike yeah. uh but again we love you guys we'll see you on the next stream all right buddy thank you so much That's for the call dude. man that was fun all right buddy all right, and we're going to bring in our final caller for the day, Jab Loka. Jab, welcome. How you doing, man? Thank you so much for, for being patient and waiting through uh, the first two callers. I know it's been a while. Of course, of course. I really wanted to talk about this subject. Mm. Go for um, it. Well, yeah, uh, I, th I think about it more in a future way. Like, what I think CIG wants us to do later on with physical components and the way tractor beams and stuff is going to work um, is to first, I guess, shoot the engine or the quantum drive or indeed something like that, and then use tractor beams to slow a ship down and then mm -hmm. board it or whatever. Sure. 
that's the future intent, I guess. Yeah, the uh, issue is the yeah. ability to stay with the ship to shoot the engines. I think is the exactly yeah, the main exactly and to damage those thing. engines in the first place. Yeah, like a light fighter doesn't have a chance to take out the engines of, let's say, the Carrick again. Mm -hmm. But I don't think they should have to completely destroy the engines. I think if you're using ballistics, yeah. which bleed damage through shields, you should still be able to do some damage to engines, and it should be a gradual thing where the the engines become less reliable, the less uh, or the more damage they become, right? Yeah. It shouldn't be a stage exactly. of they either work or they don't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But also distortions, like they should affect shields, but also all systems mm -hmm. on the ship. Sure. And I guess what you're asking for is a for. Crazy right now. Yeah, I think like we have the the component health, right? So I think what you guys are yeah. asking for is for component health to just matter more, um, to to instead of it just failing, that it, it it's degrading. Am I correct yeah. on that for both moist and Jeff? Yes. Okay. Yes, it should degrade. Yeah, like with the heat system, eventually it should be become more a long term issue. Um, yeah. and I also like the combination of it be a short, short, a short term issue with like after burning. It people keep after burning, after burning, after burning. You shouldn't be unable to use the engine, but but your top speed should just be less if you use it more because you're uh, overstressing the engine. That should maybe be a fix or at least and, and, try. and fuel usage i think like i'd really like to see fuel usage when you're after burning um yeah increase. yeah the major thing yeah. overall in this is all those ideas are kind of cool everything like you say noodle says mike says the guys that showed up earlier the major point is here you are unable to make any of that before it gets to the top speed, right? That's that's and that's yeah, yeah, that's speed. a bigger issue. So you yeah. can you can disable the Carex engines right now, like those four circles that are at the back. You can sub-target them, hit them, deal damage, and guess what? If you kill all four of them when they go down and they just uh, stop burning, you can visually see it. The Carex will have zero forward thrust. It will be always only able to utilize its back strafe and side strafe. The point is, how long it takes for it to get to the yeah. to that speed, right? Yeah, that's the only problem here. Yeah, but that's probably like a bigger balance issue for now. Things are probably gonna change again and again and again for the coming few years. But um... I've been commenting on that like top speed uh, concerns for quite a while directly to CG. They didn't even bother to just answer, like say, okay, we feel it's balanced, get wrecked, or, you know, not a single. Even on the ICS, uh, like now calling whatever, the online where they call the devs, they decided to answer the question about will the cat of a certain developer be on an extreme than answering about the character stop speed. It's kind of, they're just ignoring yeah. that, like it doesn't exist. That's what makes me sad, actually. Yeah, and I mean, I wonder if they're the ignoring it because they think it's capacitors that'll fix it, but I don't know. I think or they're ignoring beams. that because the Carrick is a very community ship, and people are just gonna go ape shit if, if they nerf uh, it. something happens. Yeah, and they're just literally afraid. That's what I think. Because the, there is no other explanation on uh, ignoring like that, not even saying right anything, just ignoring like those questions don't even exist, right? Mm. In before I, that new RSI gunship uh, comes to carry counter, you never know. <laughs> I, I would, you know, I, I, you know, there, there, I suggested a few things earlier on. There's, there's a couple of other things that I'd, I'd like to see CIG playing with hacking gameplay. Like, mm. come on, the Herald is literally a freaking cutlass black engine with a cockpit attached to it. <laughs> like that should be able to keep up with some of the fast ships. Allow it to maybe hack systems, right? Well, more counter over. gameplay they, should be in in maybe, general. Maybe they can, hit, you know, get the um, the retro thrusters to fire to slow a ship down, right? Or yeah. maybe they add a type of missile, as because somebody, sorry to mention chat, uh, Daddy Mike, but somebody mentioned in chat. Oh, here come the sirens. Um, 
somebody mentioned that if you're boosting, you're going to be lighting IR up like a Christmas tree, right? Yeah. Um, which is true. So your missiles should be more effective. So what if we had a type of missile, think fast and furious, right? That can maybe affect major torque imbalance, right? Where you fire it and it's maybe a super expensive missile to balance it. I don't know how they would balance it, yeah. but it causes your, uh, your MAV thrusters to misfire, which slows you down temporarily, right? We just need something... Um, I don't think there should be any one way to do it. I think it should come down to, you know, player choice, player skill. Um, but again, there needs to be counters on both sides. Sure. Yeah, and regarding with like QT, um, anti QT systems, like you could um, have a counter to that as well. Like someone's jamming your QT drive. Okay, someone on your e warfare station or any kind of engineering station counters that. So you have a chance to jump away. Yeah. It's yeah. like like let's let's look at the Eve example, right? They have the QT jammers, which are called scramblers and uh and dampeners, and they even have the same like bubbles, which probably CAG uh, kind of took the idea of, right? So they have the ships that create bubbles. And you can counter that by equipment on your ship. So if you have low slots equipped with what warp core stabilizers, they would they will counter a certain amount of points. Uh, in EVE, that is something that decision you make in before you undock. Do you want to go more cargo or do you want to have warp core stabilizers and low slots, right? In uh, in Stasism, maybe there is a, they, they'll come up with something you can do with the engineer right on the flight. It's, it's a very hard thing to balance because like if there will be a way, again, to counter constantly the QED by an engineer, then it's going to be like also not good. I, I'm, I'm, we need those gameplays, right? We need like peop the choices that people make, but maybe it should be like a uh, a check on like you have your QED device, right? And you can upgrade it somehow and you uh, lose something else in a ship by upgrading it. And then if engineer in a Carrick or whatever ship do some tricks with this quantum drive, it will be a check in between how good is his like equipment on the Carrick and what he did manually like a mini game yeah. compared to your equipment or your Mantis, let's say, and how you upgraded it. I don't know, something like as that. As long as these checks think... are allowed to exist because the ships are close yeah. enough to each other. Yeah, but I think that's exactly. more of an issue of components, like the choice to have different components. Like yeah. you can have that anti QED device, but you lose yeah something in return. Yeah. You lose cargo hold or whatever, you know. Yeah, you or a better scanner or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. No, it has to be around those choices. But again, it all dials down exactly like Mike said. For those skill checks to be there, we have to be in range, right? Yeah. At least if yeah. we had like. You know, if at least if we had like uh, Avengers Stalker, right? The, the it's basically the Cutty Blue, smaller Cutty Blue, right? The Avengers Stalker. If yeah. at least a Stalker had a QED device, I would had much less arguments to even rant about it because that ship can actually overtake to the proper speed, but it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. And it's like a or make a mantis ship. a ship, a proper ship, not. A oh, that's toy. another dog. The mantis is. Yeah. A mantis. That's another dog. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> if, if, if a if a stalker which is meant to subdue criminals, it has the criminal like pods, right? Criminal cells, yeah. like yeah. the same way the Cuddy Blue has. If they updated at least that to have a bubble, that would be already. Uh, something meaningful so yeah we're not like you know we're not balancing the top speeds right now it's because it, we we cannot be asked to do that we have some major changes incoming and all that but at least take this and you know if you want to catch something fast go with a stalker and then let your crew keep up like like do something you know mm -hmm. we can have like full crew running in stalkers right in fact or have a stalker and and fast ships to to do that stuff, right? And, and the bigger ships just come in later when we already dealt with the target and it's offline. Like we can have a array of like Avengers, like the Warlocks and the Stalkers and then all that stuff. Yeah. It could yeah. be an, it, it could be a temporary solution, like giving a Stalker a QED bubble, right? Yeah. And my final point for, well, the podcast for me, 
Um, about jump gates, I, th I think they're going to be defended, at least the jump gates themselves, with at least turrets and some security AI. I don't see the jump gates to be lawless. I think they're too important for gameplay reasons just to be open. They might be lawless on the side of Pyro, but protected on yeah. the side of... Because uh, yeah, be, be if, if they're going to come up with maybe. excuses, we've been sent to Pyro in a bad way. Like, I won't even say how usually people send us to Pyro, like, that is not existing in global chat, right? So we've been sent to Pyro for too many years, right? And if they, at this point, they will still create it a, a rainbow fantasy um, the system that, again, protects everyone everywhere, like, that's going to be just a shame. Mm. Yeah, Pyro needs to be lawless, but I don't think the jump gates need to be that lawless. At least have some turrets to defend it, because... Uh, turrets, maybe, yeah. Turrets, because maybe you can destroy them. It's not a gameplay if you just can't even go into the system. Yeah, it's and not the... Gameplay. And I think what works well is um, the current system with the the way the uh, the armistice br take down, like how they took the armistice zones down at these yeah. uh, stations. You could do that easily because yeah. it's all it's all pretty automated, right? So uh, a jump gate, a jump point, I think will be manned on either side, and I imagine it it doesn't necessarily have to be in a system like Pyro. It could be just like extra turrets. I wouldn't be surprised if we see an NPC pirate faction manning the jump gate at Pyro. Mm. Yeah, maybe. But also not, be the case. Not, to, not to make it too lawless, right? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. It's, yeah. it's one of the those further things you where go in, the more lawless, lawless it gets. Or, or are there pirate factions or criminal factions in there that essentially have their own rules? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Their own law, right? That's what we're be told always. Like every different yeah. system will have their different laws, and yeah. being good with UAE gives you nothing in Pyro or vice versa, right? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, but it's for yeah, ruined station, for example. I, I think you're gonna be not safe, but at least you can still trade there. You're not gonna get blown up every one minute. Yep. Actually, that's a good thing. We talked earlier about a prospect of having nothing to sell. Uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting gameplay. Would you uh, probably want to sell what you've mined in Pyro at some somewhere like a ruined station at a lower price? Maybe more than you get from like mining in Stanton, but at a lower price than you would sell it at Stanton and then let traders actually try to move it from the that ruined station to stand and this is going to be interesting we'll see how they manage that. yeah that's a different, different it's exciting. discussion yeah. it's exciting it is exciting for sure, because yeah. it, it'll it'll add a lot more nuance to the game i hope um yeah is there anything and else maybe, you want to add jeff go ahead yeah go ahead my yeah dad. maybe I, I upgrade to a freelancer door with the jump gates so i can just jump a lot with the qt Q, uh, qt drive who knows but uh, yeah that's it all right man well, thanks for calling. I appreciate it. And we'll uh, we'll talk to you next time. No problem. Have a nice day, everyone. Stay well. Bye. Well, all right, boys. I think we made it to the end. Two hours. Pretty that, good. I thought we had was about a good an hour. Yeah. It was hard to keep it on topic of speed specifically, but... I don't think we ever could. Complex... No, you couldn't. Because, because everything it's, ties it's so into it. Intertwined. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's because why this question comes up, right? Why even this question comes up? Because it ties in into everything else. And that's yep. yeah. hence why we have to discuss everything else to yeah. give like basically the why we come up with this question, right? Listen, yeah. sometimes the topic is like, how is how can we improve the starter experience? And then we start to, like when we get off topic sometimes on this show, it is literally like the 890 jump fuel consumption somebody starts talking about. Like like I'm not talking about that guy. Like we, I think we were on topic the entire time. It just, it is, it just, it is such a wide net in because it is a huge part. Um, but yeah, I, I thought this was a lot of fun, and I think I love, I, I love having you two guys on specifically because I think you two guys are able to put yourselves in the other side's shoes. And I think a lot yeah. of people are not. And that goes on both sides. I think a lot of people struggle. And th that is the only reason I... I know you guys goofed on me about talking to chat a lot during this. That was the reason why I, I said don't engage with chat too much. 
is yeah. because I don't think a lot of people in chat are able to put themselves in your shoes. I um, get excited about you... just generally the prospect of better gameplay for everybody. Yeah. Because it, it's in everybody's interest to have more people playing this game. Yeah. Right? I want more prospectors to blow up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know. And you want some of them to be able to get away because guess what? If yeah. they can't, they're going to stop playing. I mean, uh, they. Poker I owe it, is a great example of the reason poker became so popular was because an absolute terrible player like uh, Chris Moneymaker or a Jamie Gold, if those names sound familiar to you guys, um, which they might not, they were basically idiots that got lucky. And the fact that that is a possibility is what made poker so great. Yeah. The 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 mm -hmm. most skilled player did not win and does not win every hand. Sometimes yep. the least skilled player is the one who wins all the money that night, and uh, that's really important. Is is that there's this balance between between that is that there's possibilities for the more skilled pilots like yourselves to not win every time, and for the less skilled pilots in terms of combat like myself, that are able to disengage from it and quote-unquote win that engagement, right? So, yeah. <laughs> explain explain the horse to me. I actually don't know. Uh, it, it, it should live in uh, in my kid's room, but she brought it out here, and now it, it went through all this my stream, and now it's on your stream. Yeah, but what's it's the just, meme? It, it agrees with everything. It's, there is no meme. It's just... It's just oh, it's just an agreeable That's horse. It. Okay, I get yeah, it. Yeah, it's just an agreeable <laughs> horse that agrees with everything I say <laughs> and you say and everything. And it wants badly to pirate someone. Yes. Well, all right, guys. I give you the floor now. Moist Noodle, thank you. First off, before I hand it over to you, you're, you're feeling not so well, and you came on with half a voice, and you did awesome, and I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Um... You have the floor, man. Where where can people find you? What do you do? You doing anything special coming up? Uh, not really. I'm a very low effort streamer. Can't really be bothered. I just like shooting people. Uh, I stream almost daily from some point in the afternoon in Europe. Uh, if you're not in my Discord, get in my Discord. We, well, I don't really engage in my Discord, but some people do. Um, <laughs> you can find me on Mix uh, Twitch. Uh, twitch.tv forward slash moist underscore noodle um, and here's the important thing again I might be a PvPer however um, if you want to learn how to survive as a non PvPer feel free to stop by and ask questions I'm open minded enough to try and explain and teach people just how to stay alive we're going to talk uh, dual sticks you and I okay yeah I'm excited and now space cut it same for you, my friend. Uh, how how did I say last time? You can find me at Tram and Myers, right? Yeah. <laughs> Still. Yeah, uh, guys. Uh, what about Ariel? I feel like I've, I see you yeah, around Ariel, Ariel you a little find bit me more. De definitely on Ariel and Aberdeen <laughs> right now. We're trying to find all the rock miners and actually have a proper piracy game. But yeah. in all seriousness. Uh, Twitch TV, Space Cutlet, no underscores. Uh, we usually do piracy. We also break the game with my community to its full extent. And we make that public. I never hide any glitches, exploits. I just want them to get fixed. You can also try getting into the chat and asking for money, but you'll probably get ignored <laughs> uh, if I don't know you. Uh, if you come up to my chat just trying to tell me I do everything wrong, you'll just get banned. I will be very glad to educate you on everything I know because I initially started streaming just to educate people on some like more in-depth mechanics, not as, not combat specifically, but just in-depth game mechanics, right? So uh, come take a look if you like it, stay. And uh, yeah, that's me, Space Cutlet, yeah. the, the butt pirate of Star Citizen. I feel like once a quarter... I don't let me know if you guys are down. I'm kind of putting you on the spot. I feel like once a quarter we should get together and it doesn't always have to be about combat. But do you guys just want to like once a quarter maybe dive into something, one specific topic yeah. that you're like I'm, I'm I'm about? talking about a chosen topic for that particular yeah. patch. That would be cool. I just yeah. think you guys are uh good with your words, so it's it's helpful um mm -hmm. for everybody I when like we do that. 
somehow Noodle stay chill like during the podcast. Like probably that's because of he cannot like his he his throat hurts or something. I should really get ill before the next uh, podcast, so I'm kind of more. <laughs> I can help you, know, you with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm chill. Yeah, I did. Yeah, just like once a quarter. Like, what's your most passionate subject? And I think we can we can yeah. have some fun with that. It'll be fun. Um, be but cool. yeah, I guess we'll leave it here. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Make sure you follow these guys. Uh, check them out on uh, Twitch because. Noodle, you kind of do YouTube. Are you making those things? Oh, that's a lot of effort, isn't it? It we is. We all it's, know Twitch it's annoying. is going down the pan once once the DMCA thing is destroyed. True, Twitch we'll all be streaming on YouTube people. shortly, but for now, we're yeah. on Twitch. <laughs> so yeah, follow us all on Twitch, and and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next week. I don't know exactly what the topic will be. We'll do our best to get uh, Dark Law on at some point in the future because I know he couldn't make it today. And yeah, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, like, subscribe, leave comments below. Guys, if you can, stop by the YouTube video and, and maybe type a few things to some people that uh, call you a griefer. And then, um, yeah, if you're watching on, on Twitch and you didn't catch all of it, it'll be up on YouTube later today. So, yeah, thanks for watching, my, guys. My horse, my horse will talk to everyone. Who yeah, the horse will agree with what everyone says. But thank you so much for <laughs> watching, guys. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye.